Okay, what's up everybody? I should be live now. So let me know. Can you hear me about as well as usual? Yeah. Uh, Brett is going to come on in a minute. I was wondering why he wasn't ready because he's always the prompt one of the two of us. And then I realized that I hadn't sent him the link, of course. I should just assume that when something like that, when someone is late or when something like that is fucked up, that's probably something that I've done. <laughs> so he will be coming on in a moment at his convenience. I actually, I, I don't like the way that I look tonight. And that's not an invitation for you to tell me I look okay or whatever. But like, I was just out and about like... Run, running some errands and then I took a walk outside because I was on the phone with somebody and I wanted to I like walking around while I'm talking and so anyway I do look kind of like you know don't you don't have to disagree or agree but I do look uh, kind of rough so I'm gonna put on some makeup while we sit here and uh which I used to do more on live streams and then I felt like it was kind of awkward to a degree uh not for me but maybe for others I don't know <laughs> I don't know. So I'm not going to spend a long time doing it. Some people, though, have built a real following online doing their makeup while they talk about like true crime and stuff. What's that woman's name? Is it Bailey Sarian? Is that how you say it? So what's up, Brett? I'm about to bring you on. We are live right now. So you uh, hopefully you're not jerking off when I click on the picture. Here we go. All right. <laughs> you are are we good? Are we good? <laughs> Oh, man, I was just telling them that uh, I was the reason why you were not here. And I was saying that, uh, you know, my first <laughs> thought was, well, I'm surprised that he's not here ahead of me. He's normally the prompt one. And then and then, of course, in a split second, I remember that I hadn't given you the link. And I was thinking, <laughs> of course, it would be something that I've done. I should just assume, you know, that. Look, <laughs> I asked on Twitter. Uh, or no, I asked on Instagram. <laughs> I sent a text message. I'm Mr. Punctual. That's what they call you me. Are. Mr. Punctual. You are super together. You really <laughs> are. And, and particularly in a in a profession when there aren't a lot of people who are always uh, the super timely. I like I am almost never later than five minutes. I try to be within a few minutes, but I I could be more punctual. Some people are on they're on their shit in terms of that. So kudos to you. I and will tell you what, like when we go live, like I, I look at that clock. I look at the little clock in the counter and I go three, two, like as soon as it hits three, I hit live. At least one person's like late. <laughs> yeah. Late. Yeah, yeah. You um I think your crowd might I get that though if I'm if I'm late, but sometimes, but I think your crowd might be a little more rowdy just and, and more and in that way it's it's the it's fun too. I mean it's yeah. a fun crowd, right? So I get it. Uh but okay, so I did not put your name. Oh, and by the way, I also told our audience I'm a, I'm gonna be applying makeup for the next few minutes. As awkward as that is, like I do, <laughs> I didn't have a chance to do it and I would just feel better having like a few minutes of awkwardness. And then I can feel better about my appearance as we proceed. I'm not like Pamela Anderson, okay? I don't have her level of confidence, I guess. She, uh, yeah, but that's like that's like virtue signaling kind. I know, it's, I think so. So let me. Signal. I wanted to ask how you felt about that for people who don't know uh, Pamela Anderson, or if she goes by Lee now, or, I don't know. But anyway, whatever. Yeah. She, um, a beautiful woman at any age, and I don't think that she quote unquote needs makeup. <laughs> But she made, she made kind of a big deal of the fact that she was going to not wear it for a while. And it was because, and I say this without any snark, but a friend of hers died recently. Is that what happened? Is, is, is that what? I have no idea. I just remember seeing <laughs> her at the, I saw her at the show, at the, at the fashion show where she didn't have the makeup on. Uh-huh. And yeah. you thought it was too, it was kind of a eh, virtue signal. Yeah. I will. I'm like, look, like. Cake the makeup on ladies. I don't care. That doesn't bother me. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not one of those guys Who's like women look better without makeup on? Women who Thank use you for makeup well, Thank women you for who me. use makeup well are artists and do can do crazy shit to their face. Now, I don't what, but it's kind of your job as a guy to be able to look at a face and be like, that doesn't look like a human being at this point, <laughs> right? Like, but yes. you know, we've all makeup. seen faces like that, yes. <laughs> but at the same time, we have had these arguments on the channel where it's the meme says, like, no dude has ever broken up with a girl because her eyelashes were too short. Like that, that that's a thing that women care about that men don't care about. But Mary might be right in saying that men don't realize it, but subconsciously they yes. would notice it yes. if they didn't do Mary's that. Mary is right. Mary is right on that. So right on that. Let me tell you, this is like an aside, but I, I've had this debate many times with with guys. And look, I'm not some 
huge proponent of makeup and I don't feel like anyone should be pressured into it. And I'll go yeah. without makeup. I was kind of joking here, but I'll go without makeup uh, often on my show. But, but all that having been said, I was, having, I was having this discussion with a guy who was really adamant about the fact that he hated how much time and effort women put into it. And he just wished that women would just go with their natural faces because men prefer that anyway. And so I said to him, I asked him, I said, okay, can you tell me an example of some actresses or some people in the public eye that you think have a more natural look? And he, the, the examples that he gave me were all women like Jennifer Aniston who actually have a shit ton of makeup on, but it's neutral. And yeah. I think sometimes guys don't realize that when they think they're looking at a makeup less face, like, you know, some of these movie stars or whatever, even that they're just looking at neutral makeup. That having been said, kudos to you and other guys who don't who don't require it or don't think we should have to wear it. You know, well, I, I'm, I'm just saying I don't think that like but I'm not going to shame a woman for wanting to wear a lot of makeup. I, that doesn't that doesn't bother me. I, I will say that like what you like what you said there is kind of like good makeup would be like good special effects when you don't notice it. That's when it's doing its job. Yeah, right. I like, will agree. Uh, the only, the only, I will agree to, to the extent, to a certain extent. And then I'll say though, that there are some occasions less for me, maybe than some women who are more into it, but there are certain occasions where you actually want that kind of, almost like you're putting on a costume or something. You yeah. want to have a certain look that up close. Yeah. It's going to look like too much. Like I'll give you an example, like Halloween a couple of years ago, I decided that instead of wearing a costume, I was just going to really do like eighties glam. Right. And so I put on a ton of makeup and up close. Yeah. It looks ridiculous from a distance though like it was really cool so sometimes you know that's really what women are, are going for is more of a, a creative theatricality and i don't think there's anything wrong with that uh, no. so anyway i appreciate you that you don't want to shame anybody one way or the other <laughs> i say whatever whatever works like I, i've never i've never looked at a woman and been like no that's too much makeup like at least not in the re not in the real world like not, world. <laughs> not not in the real world but like maybe in the maybe in the setting where you cover something on the internet where like there are those videos that people make where oh, they yeah. show the woman who like she completely transforms herself but i have never i have never myself gotten involved with a woman who was absolutely beautiful and then when she took off her makeup looked like a goblin that's never happened to me <laughs> so maybe i would be more offended if that happened but like this is this is one of those things that people have to just decide what works for them if you feel like your uh your your face or whatever is something that you can enhance through makeup i don't see a problem with that but at the same time i probably would because i'm i'm sure I'm like five five. I would probably give a guy crap for putting like lifts in his shoes. I'm like, bro, just own, just own it. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, because eventually, just just like with the makeup, where the guy will meet the girl and he will eventually stay the night, and her makeup will come off. You know, perhaps in the morning, the guy is going to bring the girl home, and what are you going to leave the shoes on all night, bro? You're gonna <laughs> it's, you're gonna you're gonna shrink. You know, let me, I'm going to say this one thing, and then we're going to move on to the main uh, appeal of this program tonight, which will be hating on <laughs> Jada. Or not makeup, I'm... not makeup discussions. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, since you brought up height, and I don't know, like other women, you can tell me what you think. But uh, I do think that the professed um, love that women have for a tall man, or even, or not even like women themselves saying it, often it's just this idea in the media that's perpetuated in the media. I have found that like in real life, that that's not something that is a big concern of most women. And I don't, you know, I had, my dad was on the shorter side and I don't notice, I, and so maybe it's something to do with that in a Freudian sense, right? But I never notice height in, in men. So I, it's interesting because you, you brought that up to think about like, you know, how we all, it's not just women who were, who have certain things that they could feel insecure about. Or they feel like society would make them feel insecure about like men deal with this too. So I think it's cool. You brought that up and owned it. I think for a lot of men also, like my favorite is that there's this great video that was going around where it was like women who put like a, uh, like the ruler on the side of the door. They're like uh, measuring the height of the men we invite over from oh, hinge. What? Yeah. What and, was and then, that? I, I half the time I don't buy these videos. I, I think a lot of them are done as viral content. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, then yeah. like a they, like a guy made a response video where he just puts a scale in front of the door. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everyone's <laughs> got their everyone's got their stuff that they're that they're self conscious about, and it's kind of your job as an individual as you grow up to figure out. It's like they say about like it's like if you're ugly, you kind of be you develop the ability to be funny as like a coping mechanism because you you're like I'm never going to be the best looking guy in the room, but I can be the most interesting or i can be the the funniest guy in the room everyone's just got to find a way 
to make themselves feel comfortable in their own shoes. And everybody has a, a set of cards, a hand that they're dealt. And I understand objectively some some are better than others, but everybody has some strong cards they can play. Okay, I wanted to recognize the Super Chat. Shane Wilder, thank you for that. He says, Shane. Friday. <laughs> is this one of yours? Shane is one of ours. Shane, All buddy. Right. Happy Friday the 13th. I did not even realize until yep. the message. That's awesome. I'll need to watch one of those movies. I love those mm. movies. I try to watch it every Friday the 13th as a tradition. Mm. Kurtz and Dasovic, be sure to leave a camper out for Jason tonight. No, I'm so glad you told us. Thank so you. I was, we actually talked about this earlier because uh, on the show today, they're, they're making uh -huh. the Halloween series into a television show, which is a horrible idea. Um, is it, are they going to try to make it? I just have to, sorry. Are they going to try to make it scary, or is it going to be one of these like sort of campy? Speaking of campers, like sort of campy, tongue-in-cheek, silly kind of. Ugh, I who knows? It's like they just Miramax. The, the company way, Miramax sure. just got the Miramax just got the rights to it, and uh -huh. they're saying that they want to make it a cinematic universe. And I just groaned and said, "You don't need to." The whole point of a horror movie like that is it's like controlled fear for a very short period of time, and uh -huh. you get it out of your system right mm -hmm. like you watch the movie i've never been a fan like i'm not a big horror fan to begin with it's not my genre it never mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. but when it's most effective now some people like like american horror story and to be fair that that's fine those have been on for like eight thousand years but that shows a lot like the walking dead to me like i don't know who's still watching it but apparently it still has an audience but mm -hmm. friday the 13th or 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 halloween like i don't need to know the great extent of Jason or Freddie or Michael Myers backstory beyond a little bit at the beginning, you know, what, what they give you, I just want to watch him walk slowly and kill a bunch of people that are, that are. And make that noise. I was looking yeah. up the noise and it's such a great, creepy signature noise. I was trying to find like a, like a scene yeah. that exemplifies it. But anyway, but the set here, let's, let's play it and get them to hear it. Oh, I'm going to wait. Um, but uh, anyway, my point is though, like there's just some things about that as an early stalker, mm. the scary film. Here we go. <laughs> that is such yeah. a distinctive noise. I love it. It's anyway. like one of those sounds that you could have made as a kid with like the, like breathing into the, oh, what is that thing called? Uh, but there's like this thing that you could do that to make that noise. It's almost like it came from that, but those oh, you like, could. Oh, okay. Those, those movies, you know, they survived on ambiance, a lot of it, right? And when you do uh -huh. television, you lose that ambiance because the whole point is that you're in this very, very viscerally um, scary world for like an hour and a half or two hours. And when uh -huh. it comes to movies, I just I just don't – or to television shows, I just don't have an interest in it. But it is Friday the 13th today. Well, it's a great day to talk about Jada Pinkett Smith. <laughs> hey, she she died in Scream 2. At the beginning of Scream 2, she was the she, first oh, person to die at the beginning of Scream 2, which, by the way, I'm one of the only people in the world that likes Scream 2. So, you know, she uh, oh. she she had she got what was coming to her in that she, movie she, because she was yelling during the movie. <laughs> so here's my here's here's kind of what I want to do tonight. Oh, we've got uh, oh, one more super chat here. Just a second. Vanessa, thank you so much. And uh, thank you to all the mods, by the way. Vanessa, one of the mods, uh, Rebel Bird, Laura B. Thank you for getting up to do this. I saw that on there. And AJ. And uh, she says that sound touch. -cha. <laughs> oh, she's laughing at the sound. OK, so here's what I want to do tonight or right now. I have probably not been following this Jada Pinkett Smith for the last several years as closely as you have because you've been running a show where you've been more looking at pop culture and stuff like that. However, I do feel like I know the highlights. I think I feel like I've paid attention to the highlights of the last several years. Mm -hmm. And and so I thought we would talk about so we would talk about some of those highlights or those lowlights, frankly, those low points of the last several years of her behavior, because this is what I want to know. And feel free to com to comment mm -hmm. anyone. I want to know what, I seriously want to know what the fuck is wrong with this woman. Like, I, I, I don't know. Am I, tell me how you feel, first of all, because I'm about to go off on a rant, but I'm curious, does she bother you or not so much? Or you, how, do you think she's behaving rationally? Like, what's going on? I tend to not think about her. I tend to think about what, <laughs> I tend to think about what she did to Will. 
to to, okay. to oh, okay. look like I work with a I work with a 23 year old Zoomer who, when yeah. I try to explain the height of cool, the height of cool that Will Smith was in the 90s, she can't get it. She she can't get it because what she's been exposed to all these years is what she kind of turned him into, which is the height of not cool. Yeah, so um, I was trying to find a, a good picture of her here. I love this one where she looks like Village of the Damned, but that's yes. not in the best representation of Mary Morgan. But his co-host, and and it was funny. It's funny because uh, she's so, she's so so smart and because of her age, though, because she's younger. There's a lot of stuff that like we talk about or we could talk about that like like, like the Marilyn Manson thing, like trying to explain why Marilyn Manson would put fake stuff in his autobiography to make yeah. himself look edgier or look worse or whatever. And it was like, like trying to explain to her, like I, people wanted to be edgy back then. <laughs> yeah. And, it was not so risky back then. <laughs> no, it was to be encouraged. And so, so like, I think it's interesting too, to think about in, in a different, from a different angle though, to think about the Will Smith thing. So I, I guess these are, I guess we could talk about some of the high points and the low, uh, low points with these people. So they first came on my radar with the, uh, the disclosure. And by the way, well, let me just say, first of all, the red table talk, I all don't fake. know, do they make a lot of money from this? Because I would find it if I didn't need the money and I had already established a career as these people mm. have, I would feel no incentive to make a, a spectacle and frankly, a laughing, a laughter provoking spectacle out of my life. Like, what do you think is going on with that? <laughs> it feels all, like given the fact that what we know now about the fact that they were divorced or separated this whole time. Like what year did Red Table Talk start? If it started after 2016, that just makes it weirdly perverse performance art that was designed to destroy one person's uh, reputation. It, it, I guess it's, it's been on like, what, was that five years? So, uh, but, but think about that. That means that they were already split up when they were doing this because they split up in 2016. Yeah. They separated. So it really is just a weirdly perverse piece of performance art designed to both destroy her reputation and destroy his will to go on. I mean, I don't think that they think that it's destroying her reputation. She might be secretly or unconsciously, subconsciously trying to destroy him, but like, or hurt him, but, but it's definitely in that way, a kind of a sadistic exercise, but like she has to have thought starting this, that this and continuing it, that there is, that it's doing something for her. So is she such a narcissist? I see some people in the chat saying this. Is she such a narcissist that she just, needs to have the attention because I don't think dragging your family out, knowing that you've already split too. Like, it's like you said, performance art, it's a charade. It's like a Potemkin village of a family. <laughs> and you've dragged your kids into it now because they had to play along. It's so gross. Yeah. And, and how painful must that have been for Will? Okay. Well, let me just say, I did do a little bit of reading. I, I, I looked at parts of his, uh, his biography or autobiography, or maybe it was, they're all ghost written, but anyway, but his, but his autobiography. And I looked at some interviews that they had done in the past and so forth. And it really does seem like in that, sorry, in that relationship, he's the one who loves her more. And I'm not saying that to absolve him of that, of hitting Chris Rock or any of that. I'm just saying like, it seems like people, it seems like he is in some way emotionally, uh, the emotionally abused person or the manipulated person in that relationship because she doesn't seem to be able to make a clean break, but it sounds like she's been putting him through hell and he just wants the family to be together. Am I wrong? Is that the wrong? Yeah, there was, there was like the clip from like, uh, what was it? Her last birthday where he left like a message where he's like, Oh, I love you so much. And like, she didn't say anything back. And then two days later posted something about Tupac. <laughs> she just she, it really yes, does her feel... celebration of tupac is her yeah. commemoration of him regularly is is i think over the top yeah it's uh it's it's just weird and it does feel like a dude of like this could it should be a little bit disheartening to guys who are i'm like dude this guy's got all the money he's got all the status he's got all the power in the world and he's being dragged around by the ear by this woman or at least perceivably dragged around well, I know by what the you're ear. saying though like Matt Walsh um and I know politically speaking some people uh, can't stand him and they think he's really <laughs> smug I think he's actually I like to think that I'm kind of the female version of him but not so far right on a number of things but I find him very entertaining and he did a segment the, talking about how Jada Pinkett Smith is is a great uh, example of what of what not to do or, or whom whom not to marry the type of woman not to marry the type of woman to avoid. <laughs> yeah. 
And uh, he was kind of ticking through all of the sort of the shaming that she's put him through, uh, Will Smith through. Okay, I want to recognize the super chat. Um, D, D can DC, no, it's DC and C. Oh, love another it. one of yours. I love this. Yeah. We're getting your people. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you for the, the five pounder there. And he mm -hmm. or she says, P.S. Dr. Ramani podcast, but not her YouTube channel, is funded by Red Table Media by Jada. Uh, Jada credit as producer. So this uh, this is interesting because, of course, um, Dr. Romani is the, the show that hosted Evan Rachel yeah. Wood recently. So thanks for that. That's interesting. Um, so uh, do you think, I, I, well, let's talk about some of the low points then. So I wanted to, uh, I, I guess the first one would be the revelations about August Alcina. <laughs> Alcina, is that, yeah. Is that his name? Mm -hmm. and, and Jada, I'm going to get a picture of them up here. So Re recap for my audience and for me what happened here <laughs> well this is actually this is actually a really interesting part of it because this actually kind of absolves her in a way so i don't know what year this happened but it did happen after 2016 so theoretically she was in this relationship with this guy this not even guy he's like a young man who's like mm -hmm. barely right and and theoretically that happened Depending after on how they people had, want to talk yeah. about it but definitely a friend of her son and a lot lot younger than her for people yeah. who are into the age you know focusing on the age thing right yeah go but ahead. the point is is like he was now um the Theoretically, that wouldn't have been all that wrong if her and Will were broken up, but she allowed herself to be seen as this, like, you know, bad person who got in an entanglement. That's what she called it, an entanglement <laughs> with one of yeah. her uh, kids' friends when realistically that part would kind of suck, but people were like, you're, you're cheating on your husband. Mm -hmm. But realistically, if this happened after 2016, she wasn't cheating on her husband because she was, the, so they were living separate lives. So she allowed herself, I guess, to be seen as the bad guy because they weren't ready to make it public that they weren't together anymore. Basically. So I, I want to watch actually a clip of that. I know probably almost everyone has seen it, but we'll watch a clip of that. And, uh, and what's interesting, okay, so let me just say here, if I were to start putting it together, like a list of grievances that I have with Jada Pinkett Smith and why I really, I really hate her. And by the way, <laughs> when I say hate, like, I don't mean anything obviously with m malicious, like <laughs> intent behind it or violence or anything like that. My mom, I always grew up with my mom saying, never use the word hate. Just say you don't like because hate is such a strong term. So let me just say, but it doesn't make a good thumbnail for YouTube. So yes, <laughs> I, I strongly much, dislike Jada Pinkett Smith. I strongly Pink dislike yeah. Jada Pinkett Smith. But I understand I don't know her, et cetera, et cetera. But she has put herself out there and as it turns out, put herself out there with this fake family situation and bringing her kids out and putting Will Smith through moments like this. So I want to watch this where she talks in front of him and has him for her show walk walk the audience through her affair with this younger guy this friend of their sons i mean that really is pretty uh disturbing it's pretty jaw-dropping okay yeah. here we go so we're gonna watch it uh watch this and we'll come back to it oh sorry i need to share the screen <laughs> here we go okay uh, yeah you just feel like it ain't really nobody, no, nobody's, nobody's business. business yeah, but... yeah. But now Black Twitter has claimed <laughs> it as their business. <laughs> but, you know. I... I think, um, you need to say clearly what happened. Now Black Twitter, it's called what? You and I decided we were going to take our space and what happened? An entanglement? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A relationship. Yes, it was a yeah. relationship. Now, in the process. Mm -hmm. And left you <laughs> There's the meme. The meme comes from that, yeah, from I'm that shot. Manner. I would definitely say and we did. And it all started with, you know, me wanting to help his health, his mental state. Because for know? me, that was the thing when oh, I when his mental state. um when Aug first came around, he was he was really, really sick. sick. He was really, you know? really sick, yeah. And uh, the outpouring for him from our family goes uh, initially about his health yeah she poured out a lot he him. found mm -hmm. you know too mm -hmm. and i mean the thing from is there you know yeah and we listen to some more of this i want to make a few observations and then see what you think too um like i am very as people know if they if they're on watch my show i really think the word grooming in our society has been overused and the definition or the reference mm -hmm. has been expanded 
But if anybody wanted to make a case for this kind of behavior of someone who's older and and has a lot more uh, knowledge of the world as in a, in a superior position career wise, financially mm-hmm. and all these ways. And then you have this younger person who's lacking stability, who's lacking a sense of self, who is depressed. They, they say basically he's mentally ill. Yeah, and- they actually acknowledge the fact that this isn't necessarily somebody functioning completely whole as, not- a, as a human being. Yeah, so he's not- How old was he at the time? Somebody in the in the chat let us know uh, something that it's something I probably should have known coming into this. Like, uh, he was not underage, so yeah. I think I think we're talking about someone. Correct me if I'm wrong, you all, but probably someone in his early twenties. Um, yeah. Someone will let us know. And look, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to get Jada Pinkett Smith. I'm just saying that as we look at her behavior over the past, you know, five, ten years, what have you. This is one of the things that she unnecessarily puts out in the media. Like, that's what I don't get, Brett, Mm -hmm. is that this is the type of thing that normal people, including me, I think, would would not want this sort of thing out there, would be hoping that people don't don't (laughs) hear about this, that it's not. and, And instead, they're pushing it out and she's having her husband. He has to sit there through it and laugh. I mean, I'm sorry not to get too crude, but if if I were with someone that I loved, you know, like my husband, and he cheated on me, those images in my head of of seriously of his dick inside of another woman's body and them like all like moaning and doing all the stuff that people do, that would make me so sick to my stomach. And I understand some people are polyamorous; it doesn't, but I'm sure it makes Will Smith sick to his stomach, yeah. and she makes him sit there and laugh through it. <laughs> Yeah, like, I mean, there, there could make the argument, if he didn't look so dejected, this whole video, like, you could <laughs> make the, the video that, like, look, maybe he's just into that shit, like, who knows? Yeah, I guess yeah, that's yeah. A thing. Yeah, people, but, yeah. But also, he, like, okay, first of all, I, I don't want to say the, the grooming, like, he's he's an adult, he's in his early 20s, he's a dude, you're expected. And I'm not either. I'm yeah, not like, either. you're expected, yeah. espe- especially, and, and we'll, uh, we've had these discussions before, like, it, it should be the same for both genders, but it's going to be treated differently when it's a woman right. and a dude, because as a guy, you're going to be, right. in a lot of ways, expected to man your responsibilities at an earlier age right. than a lot of people. Held responsible but, for things yeah. more, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what what you're but what they're doing to will here is just shocking because uh one if they were already broken up by that point then you're humiliating him for no reason because what he could be saying is like but we're not together anymore we don't live the same life anymore uh-huh. so it was okay but they're cloaking it in this weird veil of um in like a, a costume of good deed mm-hmm. like where where i was helping i was yeah, nursing him back to hell productive for this guy they're not taking yeah. advantage in any way and it's not just some oh we had a fling but like we were this was actually like sexual therapy i mean are we into some like you know far eastern tantric is she, <laughs> uh, is she a licensed sex therapist if so you know <laughs> I don't know. It just seems like these are the, and again, I'm, I am, I hate the prudishness that me too, I think is ushered in society and everything and stuff. But, but I feel like this woman is a user and a manipulator. And I feel like if society is going to get upset with men for having relationships that are of age, but with younger women and where society sees a power imbalance, they, they're saying that this guy, this younger guy was basically kind of out of his mind and was extremely vulnerable and was not, he doesn't sound to me like capable of really making these decisions. So I don't know. I'm just saying because she's a woman, she gets a pass. And I, and also because in general, now this is not a blanket statement for all of these instances, but the guys are going to be a lot less likely to come forward later and write a book about this than the, uh, than Mm -hmm. the woman is right. Like that's Mm -hmm. a, a big part of this is like, we talk a lot recently about the it's basically the bad decision to memoir pipeline which is you do a bunch of bad stuff in your 20s uh mm-hmm. society rewards you especially with women right society rewards you for promiscuous behavior you may or may not uh have a problem with it at the time maybe you do maybe you don't but years later you go to therapy societal values change and you 
tell yourself now that these things that you willingly did in your 20s were actually some form of uh of violence against you of right. emotional violence Recasting psychological you went through. yeah so and and right now the biggest reason that i find this whole thing funny is without fail whenever whenever these celebrities make some big revelation like what we're seeing here with her saying we were separated for seven years i'm like i just skipped to the bottom of the article I'm like tell me when the book comes out <laughs> i get it you've got a book coming out yeah that's what it's always i mean about. she's she's all about self-promotion and i guess that's the mm -hmm. thing that uh, that we were talking about a few minutes ago was the fact that and, and look we have youtube shows we like you know we like promotion too we're self-promoters but i'm just saying mm -hmm. if i already had the kind of career and money and yeah. esteem and everything that she has and my children's as futures were more than secure and i just don't understand what's <laughs> the need to take all this and put it out in front of people um and to be laughing about some of this painful stuff all right i want to watch some more of this but yeah. we have some uh super chats uh carmel uh, carnell carmel. yeah i love that you know these people it's awesome I thank do. you for bringing these new ones in okay yes. so he says has anyone ever thought of asking the question what if Will had something to do with Tupac's death? <laughs> and Jada has some tea on Will. The plot thickens. I there had not was, thought of that. Had you, Brett? There was a uh, I, I Carnell. Carnell's the man, and I think he might have. I might have sent him the, yeah. the meme, or he might have sent me the meme. But there was one where it was like a picture of Jada and Tupac, and mm. then and then another one of Will Smith, and it said Jada Pinkett Smith was the only bullet Tupac ever dodged. <laughs> <laughs> that is so mm, true mm. <laughs> and and funny and not funny but no it is not funny. <laughs> it is funny. you know not funny I like, like and, and now, they're like kind of humor. <laughs> now they're distracting us with the fact that they've supposedly caught tupac's killer so you know maybe will smith did have something to do with it maybe he like so this guy says that p D that that puff daddy p diddy paid him a million dollars to do it maybe will like was like hey, i'll give you a million dollars to give this guy a million dollars because he won't stop <laughs> he won't stop hitting on my girl oh man uh i mean it could always be could always be <laughs> all right so we've got uh uh say it again how do you say it dc and c DCNC, thank you for this. He says, what was the thing about someone in J Jada's family teaching one of the girls how to earn, how, oh, how, how to touch oneself or whatever? I don't know anything about that. Do you know? What I don't know anything about, about that. Okay. Uh, I'm glad I don't, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too on that. I know that, uh, <laughs> you know, I know that Oprah Winfrey, I don't know why this popped into my mind, but Oprah Winfrey, she had a horribly tragic um, first uh first 15 years or so of like of child molestation and things like that like some of these people who've gone on to do big things in life i know they've come from really terrible backgrounds but uh you, hey you brought up i wanted to say one thing before we get back into this you brought up the tupac thing and some people don't know this but yeah tupac shakur and jada pinkett when they were first getting started in the entertainment industry they were really close and she says that they loved each other, but there was just not that sexual romantic chemistry there, but they were like best friends. And she said that one night they decided that this is her telling it. So I don't know, Jada, right? But she, in her telling, uh, one night she and Tupac decided that they were going to kiss, they were going to make out, they were going to try it. And that they did, and it was really awkward and <laughs> weird, and they decided they weren't going to do it again, but that they were they were best friends. And then when she started dating Will Smith, this was not too long before Tupac ended up being shot, but when she started dating Will Smith and it got serious, that it was it was hard for Tupac because um, he, you know, he, he didn't, yeah, I didn't want to have sex with her, but he also got didn't like the attention being shifted away from him so i always thought that was an interesting story that's really interesting like especially for like you know he's a he's a legendary rap star and mm -hmm. you like you, that's that's crazy to think that it really did just come down to chemistry maybe it really was one of those things where it's like look they've known each other for so long mm -hmm. that it would just be weird i mm -hmm. guess yeah. You know? yeah no it is it's kind of you know the guy <laughs> um my my guy uh who i call my husband we're not legally married but been together forever we met when we were in middle school school and if we had started like if we had tried to start um dating like years later but without any break it would have been really weird it wouldn't have worked but he ended up going away to the army and i ended up doing other things and we didn't see each other for years and years so when we met up again it was kind of like a stranger but like, uh, but I think that the, you know, the, a lot of the time it is very like strange when people know each other too well, they grow up together. Okay. Yeah. So, um, 
Uh, let's continue with this. Oh, wait, there was one more super chat. One more I'm going to get, and then we're going to we're gonna keep going. I appreciate the super chats tonight. So it's always a good problem to have having too many of them. Uh, Olivia Claire. Oh, I'm sorry. You said happy Friday. Olivia Claire. <laughs> Olivia Claire says happy Friday, Brett. I love the cardigan. Kurtz, you look lovely as always. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much. And um, I appreciate all people turning out. Look at, this is actually, Brett, I think, the, the highest number of people that we've gotten for this show. And it just Excellent. tells me that there is a lot of dislike for Jada Pinkett Smith. So let's continue. <laughs> it's and not look that at... they like us. It's that they no. don't like her. So let's continue and watch her doing this to her husband uh, or whatever. And we decided. I was done with your you, ass. Yeah, you kicked me to I the curb. I was done with you. Yeah. <laughs> we Marriages basically... have that, though. Yeah, Marriages have that. Yeah, we... we decided that we were going to go figure out how to make yourself happy. And I'll figure out how to make myself happy. Well, at, I really felt like we could be over. And then what did you do, Jada? Well, you know, I think from there, you know, as time well, went on mm -hmm. with August. I one, launched into an interaction. What do you feel like um, you were looking for? Mm -hmm. It had been. Right. And it was. I think that has a lot which is another thing that I had to learn to break in this cycle, kind of just awkward. that idea of needing to fix and being drawn as your health or whether it's your addictions. Mm -hmm. There's some. We'll move, uh, we'll move to another one. This one I found uh, the person edited in a particular way, but I think that we get the point. And the way, look, to me, it's the laughing that she does. What's up with the laughing, Brett? Yeah. Because she laughed again. Well, And we're going to look at it uh, the, at the latest interview in a minute. But like she, when the interviewer says to her, you've been separated for this many years and she giggles like what is up with oh the that dude that did is it that interview with her with the blonde hair yeah like, well, look she at looks like a super villain happened. yeah she super looks like a super villain <laughs> she does she's like yes she's got like this smirk on her face she just looks kind of evil man and will looks dead inside and he it looks really like does and through it with her he really it does, does all look like performance art to me it just looks like weird perverse internet performance art in which we take these celebrities and it's kind of what you said earlier like why would you do this if you have this money in this uh in this mm -hmm. life that's got infrastructure built up around it that really in in a lot of ways doesn't need it like one of the things that i do envy about the average like uh mainstream celebrity is like look if you don't want to be the one who runs your social media account then you can have somebody do that and not everybody really has that option or the, uh, the ability to do that. It's uh, It would be very difficult for a lot of people to be able to do that because they have to have a finger on the pulse of what their audience wants and what they're and what people think about what they're doing. But like now, like it, it's it, in a way, it's becoming more commonplace for them. Like there have been actresses that have spoke to like when they're when they're getting cast for roles. They're the directors or like uh, people who do the hiring process will be like, look, you don't have a big enough following online. Mm -hmm. Like you need to, you need to be able to help us Are promote you saying this. that she feels that Jada Pinkett, even having what she's got, what she's established in life and she and will like, she thinks that she needs more, more yeah. fame, more people on her uh, watching it's, her. It's yeah. an addiction for a lot yeah. of people. It's, yeah. it's an addiction. Now, I can't right. say whether that's true for her, but it just does seem like well, seems out of all like the things. <laughs> if we took, okay, look, if we were to take the list of uh, like, what, what is it? The signs of addiction. And they ask yeah. people like, and I don't remember all of them, but like one of them is persisting in a behavior, even when it's bringing negative, negative consequences, consequences, when it's hurting your relationships with others, like what, like maybe she is truly addicted because it's not good PR. And I don't see where even, I know bad PR, it can be good, but I don't see where in this case, these cases, it really is. Uh, okay. Carnell says, hello again. There's been a clip from 2019 where Will attempts stand-up comedy to conquer a fear. Once he discovers Jada was sitting in the crowd, Will completely freezes and abandons his set. It's worth the watch. Could you find it and put it in the chat? You don't have to. That again, but. I wonder if that's um like even that feels like performance art to me. Like are even you that thinking feels, you don't think that they really are having these issues, or just that she is exploiting it though? For the it camera? just feels exploitative and all this yeah. stuff, and like yeah. uh, like he needs to just move on, go through like a man whore phase in your fifties, dude. Just go. Uh, you know, get with a bunch of supermodels. You're Will Smith. You were a big deal for a lot of years and then <laughs> settle down with, uh, with, with someone else and, and live happily ever after. Like get back those 20 years that you just, uh, you know, gave her for free. 
So the so they did an inter. I agree. They the one interview of theirs that I looked at, and in a second we're going to look at Will. Um, this is a famous clip some of people have seen where she's forcing the camera in his face and he doesn't. Want yes, to yes, that we'll one, look at yeah. that in a second. But I one of the interviews that uh, that I watched from the past with them, he was talking about how he feels like he spent all of this time in life trying to make her happy. And I know a lot of people might say this, but she was sitting there agreeing with it basically that he is <laughs> that, that that he actually was doing all these things for years and years to try to make her happy, bending over backward to create this home, this haven, this family and all of this. And that she just, nothing would make her happy. She was inherently dissatisfied and she was agreeing with that. And I, I think that it's amazing that will, he's so needy for a family that not only will he continue under those circumstances until it sounds like she just puts a stop to it. Um, or he, or he, she puts him through so much yeah. that it's enough of her, but then, but he, he even after they were separated, they've been separated for years when he gets so riled up that he hit Chris rock. Like that shows how much is still going on with him uh, that years after they separate, he's defending her. Like she's his wife. Well, there was also, well, but, but at the same time, didn't she, if I remember correctly from the clip after Chris rock makes that joke, she like looks at Will Smith. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you going to do about it? And now she's kind of rewriting history and Did saying, she? like, well, that's interesting here. Let's, yeah, I'm gonna, like, we'll, we'll get to that, too. Let's look at the one where um, I'm looking at him now. Um, Will Smith. How should I search for that? Uh, pleading with Jada? Yeah, I, I don't know. I remember that clip. Be here, I'm going to find it. I'm trying to find it. But um, oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Confrontation with Jada. I think this is it. All right. We're going to try this here. I'm going to try it here. Uh, okay, let's see. Yep. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson. He has admitted to being diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. So good for him for trying to deal with that, but that's got to be a handful for the women he dates. Got to be a handful. That's probably why he can't stay in a relationship that long. But, okay, here we go. So here's the setup, everybody, is that Jada for her show or what have you, she's trying to get Will to talk on camera and you can see that he plainly does not want to talk and he's pleading with her and trying to assert himself. So here we go. Steph Perel is coming to the, you know, Steph Perel is coming to the table. She's going to be at the red table. Would you say she has been instrumental in you and I redefining our relationship? I would say, don't just start filming me without asking me. Oh my goodness. If you could film me. come help us again, please. I'm still dealing with foolishness. Don't. No, nah, no, nah, she, yeah, because she don't just. Would you say that she helped us heal the hurts that we caused to be one another? My social media presence is my bread and butter, okay? So you can't just use me for social media and not, you know, don't just start rolling. I'm standing in my house. Don't just start rolling. Don't please just... watch a stare at the red table because she's helped us a lot. Can't you? She's just evil. Oh, Jada. Yeah. And she's, she's like, he's, and he's pleading with her in his own way. He's not like on his knees or whatever, but like, he's trying no, to, he's stay. defensive. Like he's like, yeah. he's like, he's, he's recoiling and in holding to his chest. Like, look, I mean this, please stop doing this. He's pleading with her. Right. Right. And she laughs. That's the thing that to me seems takes it over the edge makes it seem like there's really something wrong with this woman or even, I don't like to use the word evil, throw that around, but if people want to like something very malevolent uh, or sadistic about her, it reminds me of, I hate to say it. I don't hate to say it. Amber Heard. It really does the yeah. way that Johnny Depp would in some of these recordings, he would be pleading with her at various times uh, to change her behavior. And he would say there can't be violence and so forth. And she would start at times laughing at him. I think these types of women, they really do have a, a sadistic streak. And also I think mm. they interpret expressions of love and tenderness as weakness, I guess. That's oh, yeah. a narcissistic Absolutely. trait, but they see it as weakness, right? Yeah. Oh, isn't that funny? You're kind of pathetic. It's pathetic to them. I think. Also, like, look, for, for a lot of women to make it in that industry, and I, I, I feel like I, I have no – it just feels like if you want to make it in entertainment as a woman, if you want to make it in news as a woman, you have to have a type A personality that may run headlong um, into the more nurturing traits of femininity. That, like, right there, he is very clearly not the – 
the alpha in their relationship. She's very clearly the one who mm -hmm. seems to wield all the power. And that seems like something, whether we're talking Amber Heard or Jada Pinkett Smith, that, you know, you're going to find an, uh, you know, like a larger than average number of, of women that are going to have a more forceful type, a almost somewhat masculine personality in the way that they approach the world. I, I see what you're saying, and I think there is some validity in that. I would say, though, that even if one had a more, a, a less traditionally feminine personality, even if that would lead to some clashes, I don't think that that has to run hand in hand with a kind of like sadism or narcissism that we're seeing. And I, yeah. I mean, there are some couples, like I was thinking about Sharon Osbourne and Ozzy Osbourne, like they've had so many ups and downs and split and got together and whatever, but like she's taking care of him. They're, they're riding out their last years together. And He's always talked about how she's the the rock in the relationship and she's the one who calls the shots and whatever. And he likes that. But these some of these men like Johnny Depp, I think Will Smith, some of these others, they get they get enticed into these relationships with women who are deeply disturbed and take that that masculinity or that that aggression or that sense yeah. of confidence too far because they're. They're, they're narcissistic, sadistic people, I guess. I don't know. And it's entertainment, and you're going to see in a larger than average number of yeah, self involved people <laughs> in that industry. No, it's that is true. Um, so, I uh, so so this is what happened then in this progression. So they do the red table talk. They start the red table talk show, and then there's there are the disclosures about August Alsina and about her entanglement. And yes, yeah, somebody noted the use of that word, and of course that word is that the use of that euphemism, right, tells you a lot. But it talks about the entanglement. Then, um, I guess the next big event was the slap heard around the world or seen around mm -hmm. the world. Right. And I'm, and I'm not even going to show it again. Everybody's uh, seen it who wants to see it and what have you. <coughs> um, what was your opinion at the time on that, Brett? I made a video about it and I'd love to share what I think, but I'm curious yeah. what you think. What was your opinion at the time or what's your opinion now about that? And like, how bad was it? What do you think? I thought the reaction to what he did was overblown. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I did. I, I thought that it was, uh, I mean, I was, I was not surprised by it, but mm -hmm. on one hand, but on the other hand, I'm like, look, like now I understand that the world is different in the, in the realm of high end Hollywood at this big event. I also would like to know why they're always so bad at hiring people that actually prevent people to get to the stage. Cause people seem to be able to get to the stage whenever they want. But like, I'm like, look, <laughs> go to a bar any weekend and some dude's going to end up slapping another dude for saying something like it just, it seemed like it was blown out of proportion, but it, a lot of people, the discussion immediately became about like, what is, what did Jada do to him to get him to react this way. But the idea to think about it now and see that they weren't even still together, it's almost like a weird type of, uh, a weird response for him to do it. Like he's afraid that the, that the ruse will be up if he doesn't defend her. Yeah, it definitely, I, I think he pointed out something interesting, which is that it definitely knowing that they were separated and many years and several years separated at the time that it really cast things in a, a strange light. And so I want to, I want to talk about a couple of things here that you brought up that I think are good points. So the idea that this was that, that the reaction to it on social media and people acting like this, you know, basically acting the same as if a man had come up and had punched a woman in the face and that you thought it was, it seemed out of proportion. I think that this is such a, it's such an interesting and thorny thing because on the one hand, I think that we all, want to send the message that um, violence, man on woman violence and woman on man violence are not excusable. Right. And so, yeah. and especially those of us like me who spent, who've spent, you know, like years now talking about the Johnny Depp case where I, you know, where I feel like people just sort of shrugged off the fact that a man was being abused. That having been said, yeah. At the same time, we do recognize, though, that when we're talking about man on man violence, and maybe it should not be this way, we could have that debate some other time, but that society up until now has viewed that as being sort of more, okay, these are boys roughhousing, it's different than something going on between the genders, and, and even that there is something, yes, honorable about 
about assaulting someone else if you're a man and some and another man has in some way offended your wife. Now, I'm not saying that I think that what he did was okay or that it sh- I think it should have received social censure, but I'm I'm just saying that I do think that you're being really honest about something that almost everybody kind of understands and kind of gets, which is that these are some thorny things and that we can say that we we feel or but we believe one thing, but then actually the feeling that we have when we see something like this, it can be different. Now, I want to say one other thing, which is that um, I read, again, parts of his biography, his autobiography, and he talks about, Will Smith talks about in there about how the worst moment in his life, like literally the worst moment of his life, he said, was when he was young, a child or a young man, mm-hmm. And someone, and I'm trying to remember if someone hit his mother, maybe, but there was some woman in his life that he was close to or maybe part of his family who got in some way um, hit or assaulted. And he felt the lowest he said he'd ever felt like a, this coward and this weakling and this horrible person because he allowed it to happen and that he swore to himself that he would never let a threat or yeah. aggression go unpunished. And so anyway, I'm not excusing it, but I do think that that's probably what was triggered there. I don't think it was so much about he and Jada having this great marriage. And so that's, they were like really in tune and that's why he did it. I think it probably just triggered something like that. But the thing is, is that she sits there and she knows that he has just wrecked his reputation mm-hmm. for her and yet there's no attempt on her part to help him. And now she's, again, she's dragging him through the mud in a way and she's hurting him again. Like that's the thing is she just doesn't seem to see or care what she is driving this man to in a way. <laughs> Telling you he needs to just leave her and and find himself a, a new lady and settle down. You're Will Smith. You do not need her. And then just go back to, to making movies. But I also wonder if a lot of it is like, look, when you're, I mean, they have pr- they have production companies together. They have business together. Like it, it would be like Jay Z and Beyonce trying to get divorced now. They're literally so entangled, for lack of a better oh, word. Oh my lord! Yeah, um, those two. <laughs> like, like the, they, there's so much money and there's so much capital between uh-huh. them that uh-huh. it's like a divorce for them is not the same thing uh, <laughs> as it is for a normal person. That is right? like a, a state, like a set of states seceding from another, from a country, yeah. right? No, yeah. it is like things that like things that happen with these kinds of stars when they get married <laughs> and like Aunt Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie or what have you, wh- that is like basically like heads of state there. And so mm-hmm. when they split, especially if there's lots of rancor, then it can take years and years and all of this fight. I mean, as we see with Brad and Angie and it can get, it can get rough. It can get gross. Yep. Um, okay. So, so what do you think? Well, okay. I wanted to watch actually, I'm trying to think we should do that now. Yeah. Let's, let's do that now. So I wanted to watch the actual interview then that Jada just did the portion of the interview where she wink, wink, ha 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 laughter tells us that, Basically, the super villain interview. They've been living a charade up to basically a charade up to this point. Okay, let me find it. Um, what did you think about this? I mean, you've seen it before while I'm calling it up. You there? Hello? I'm there. Oh, okay, yeah. What did you, you've seen this earlier? What did you think yeah. about it? I'm calling I, it up right now. She looks evil. She looks absolutely evil <laughs> while she's doing it. And it's uh, almost like she's excited oh, to talk about it and, and to ruin his reputation further. Uh, like it, and also it's like it's like imagine this like if if she was really looking for a story for the book if she hadn't already tried to like embarrass him before with the Alcina story that could have been the big uh selling point of this book about how she mm-hmm. had an entanglement that could have been the big selling point but she's like oh no I've already used that to destroy Will Smith a little <laughs> bit I'm gonna have to find something else and so now she has to come out I really hope he just ends up coming out like I feel oh, like Lord. if now that they can be honest about this mm-hmm. like he can maybe get away and be less uh you know stuck trying to appease her I would, well, you would hope, I would hope that going through this kind of public humiliation and exposure, that at least one huge good thing that would come of it is it would finally show him, like, the jig is up. You don't need to continue the charade anymore. Everybody knows, isn't it time to leave? Um, It kind of reminds me of, like, in the 80s when Rock Hudson uh, he finally, cause he, he got really sick, he disclosed, and it was apparent to everyone when he went on TV that he was very sick. He disclosed that he was, he was dying of AIDS and that he was a gay man. And it really actually was uh, kind of ground 
groundbreaking for the gay community. And I just think about like something like this, you know, it's not going to be groundbreaking for any kind of social movement, but it might actually be very liberatory personally for Will Smith to finally get out from underneath this woman. My God. Okay, no. The the funniest timeline would be he like he quits acting and starts like a MGTOW channel and, and starts making like men going their own way content and live streaming. Uh, and then goes on fresh and fit or something. I don't know. Like I lean into it, bro. Just get free and, and do something else. Do anything else. But this and if they make a movie about it, my gosh, make sure that he's the one that produces it so that he can come out of the movie looking better. Oh not my her. Gosh. Oh my gosh. All right. So let's see. This is uh I'm sure they'll intersperse some annoying reportage, but uh but here we go. We are back 814 with Carson and Hoda's exclusive interview with Jada Pinkett Smith and everyone's going to be talking about this. Yeah, oh, she yes. is one half of Hollywood's most powerful couple. She's at the center of constant That's not gossip true. and controversy, including that slap at the Oscar. She was sitting right next to Will Smith. And when we met up with Jada in her hometown of Baltimore to talk about her candid new memoir, Worthy, she opened up about an issue that has been kept secret Worthy. until now. <laughs> there are so I do many want to point out surprising things in the book, but the thing that surprised Hold me on the one most second. I'll come, that I'll I go actually back. had What did to, you want to point out? She, the the lady who interviewed her, I said uh -huh. this in the show. Her, she, her, yeah. she looks like a she looks like a weird amalgamation of Linda Hamilton and Kamala Harris. You know what? I would have never thought that, but as soon as it came out of your mouth, I'm like, that's exactly she, right. Yeah, she's got Linda Hamilton like like facial features. The, she has the kind of mannish uh, Linda Hamilton face. She's an attractive lady, but definitely I could see the mix. I could see the mix there with with Hoda. And okay, <laughs> none of Sarah Connor. None of Sarah yeah. Connor. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. I'm gonna play this here. Worthy though, you were right to point that out as well. What a ridiculous, yeah. pretentious yep. title. Until now. There are so many surprising things in the book, but the thing that surprised me the most that I actually had to reread it right. because I said, is this true? Right. Was that in 2016, Stop the clapping. you and Will decided that you were going to live completely separate lives. Yes. It was not a divorce <laughs> on paper, right. but it was yes. a divorce. Yes. So from the year 2016, which is seven years ago now. <laughs> yes. Y'all have been yes. <laughs> apart. Yeah. Yes. That but in is you, like, the so, I'm sorry, we'll continue, in, like, but that is so fucking bizarre. That, that yes so was bizarre. evil. She's like, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Might as well have like a like a, a cat on your shoulder and going like this and yeah. Mm. Yes, I was trying to think it reminds me of some kind of a character who would really extend the S. Yes. And then the giggling throughout, like diabolical, like she was really, you know what? It reminds me of a character like from Dangerous Liaisons, like the Glenn Close character. If any of you've ever seen, or the, the Buffy the Vampire Slayer played her in the remake, but uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar. But I like, was going to say, don't you mean yes. the far superior cruel inventions? <laughs> no, which is absolutely far? not. Yes. Yes, cruel intentions no. all the way. You're wrong. No. I'm but I'm sorry. in love with John Malkovich. So some people won't know what we're talking about, but but you should you should rent this. You should check it out. Either this one or you can do the, the modern cruel, cruel intentions. intentions, baby. It's so good. <laughs> but anyway, basically what these uh what these are these uh, movies are about is people who enjoy fucking with the hearts of other people and mm. ruining them psychologically and just putting them through these games. And I feel like Jada is playing some kind of game here with Will Smith. It's really gross. That's an interesting thing to point out too, because think about that in today's day and age. Would they make a movie in which the guy is the one who ends up having a crisis of conscience in that movie? Ryan Phillip, you know, mm -hmm. Valmont is the one who has the crisis of conscience, mm -hmm. not her. Mm -hmm. She's uh, She has no problem destroying other people. In fact, that's one of my favorite scenes at the end of that movie. And it's, I mean, it doesn't really give it away, but like she's, mm -hmm. uh, she's looking up at this person right. who is, uh, they've caught her with uh, substances and she looks like a little girl. Because, mm -hmm. because she looks like a little girl who's finally been caught doing something wrong. But mm -hmm. before that moment, she was just pure evil mm -hmm. the whole movie. 
Yeah, well, it's definitely, you know, that movie, that character, going back to the work of, you know, French literature hundreds of years ago, is definitely a prototype for a kind of woman who's, like, very crafty and sadistic and all but high. But, uh, but I think the thing that makes Jada more disturbing to me in a way is that she's doing it under the pretense of like trying to be this really advanced human being, which is the next part I want to talk about. I want us to take a break. We take five minute breaks on my show to those yep. of you who are new, but take a break and uh, come back in a, in five minutes or so. But I want to talk about the way that she, she couches all of this Jada in, in this guy under the guise of being this like very like um, in, enlightened person, or she's seeking enlightenment in a very sort of like Buddhist type way. It's very odd. So we're going to come in back the chat. To in the chat, it. somebody <laughs> said, "Call me Mr. Williams." Says cruel entanglements. That's what they could call cruel them. entanglements. Let's I love go. it. <laughs> oh, and D, uh, DC, DC, Andy. I'm always getting DC and C. DC and C. Okay, is uh, is she faking the alopecia? <laughs> hey. That's not to me. Her behavior has been so uh, narcissistic and, and attention seeking that I don't think that is like totally beyond the realm. And so I don't think that's a weird comment. We will look at that. We'll talk about that a little bit. OK, I'm going to go away for five minutes. And for our audience, I will actually show the trailers, the uh, the advertisements for both Dangerous Liaisons and Cruel Intentions. And you <laughs> can judge while we're gone. Which trailer do you think is better? Hopefully, I won't get booted for this, but uh, for doing trailers. Okay, I'm going to put these on, and uh, and then I will be back. All right. And, Brett, I'm taking you off. We'll be back in a bit. I've always known I was born to dominate your sex and avenge my own. Is there anything I could do to help? Come back when you've succeeded with Madame de Torveau. Yes. And I will offer you a reward. My love. I have this appalling reputation. Yes, I have been warned about you. What is true of most men is doubly so of him. I can't. You, love what you, you promised yes, not to speak course. of it. Yes, I understand, but I must know. I can't. I want the excitement of watching her betray everything that's most important to her. I love you so much. You may genuinely be unaware of this, but I can see quite plainly that you're in love with this woman. No, not at all. Why do you suppose we only feel compelled to chase the ones who run away? Immaturity? Are you zillowing, man? You know, you could be a model. It's too bad you're not sexy. I can be sexy. You know what would be super duper sexy? If you lost all the clothes. Huh? I'm sick of sleeping with these insipid Manhattan debutantes. Ow! Nothing shocks them anymore. But you can relax. I have a mission for you. Why I Plan to Wait by Annette Hargrove. Paradigm of chastity and virtue. Introduce her to your world of sex, drugs, and what else do you do? She's young, supple. She'll be my greatest victory. You don't stand a chance. Care to make a wager on that? If I win, then that hot little car of yours, mine. And if I win? I'll give you something you've been obsessing about ever since our parents got married. Happy hunting, Sebastian. Ciao. Do you think you could arrange a little get-together? Hmm. Don't think this isn't going to cost you. God, you're beautiful. Boldly go where no man has gone before. People shouldn't experience the act of love until they are in love. 
Do you mind if I take my new car for a ride? I can't win with you. It's not about winning, Sebastian. Will you stop? It's okay, you can laugh. She's really getting you, isn't she? I'm completely infatuated with her. We're destroying an innocent girl, you do realize that. You're just a toy, Sebastian. Get it together. Let me know when you do. I thought we were just gonna be friends. Is she for real? Stop it. In the game of seduction, there is only one rule. Why can't we be together? Because I don't trust myself with you. Never fall in love. Are you in? Or are you out? Quite the prediction. Your damned cousin, the Valange bitch, wanted me away from Madame de Tourvel. Well, now I am, and I intend to make her suffer for it. Your plan to ruin her daughter? Are you making any progress? Is there anything I could do to help? I'm entirely at your disposal. Well, yes. I told Donsony you would act as his confidant and advisor. I need you to stiffen his resolve, if that's the phrase. I thought if anyone could help him. Help? He doesn't need help. He needs hindrances. If he has to climb over enough of them, he might inadvertently fall on top of her. <laughs> I take it he hasn't been a great success. Oh, he's been disastrous. Like most intellectuals, he's intensely stupid. I often wonder how you managed to invent yourself. Well, I had no choice, did I? I'm a woman. Women are obliged to be far more skillful than men. You can ruin our reputation and our life with a few well-chosen words. So, of course, I had to invent not only myself, but ways of escape no one has ever thought of before. And I've succeeded because... I've always known I was born to dominate your sex and avenge my own. Yes, but what I ask was how. When I came out into society, I was 15. I already knew that the role I was condemned to, namely to keep quiet and do what I was told, gave me the perfect opportunity to listen and observe. Not to what people told me, which naturally was of no interest, but to whatever it was they were trying to hide. I practiced detachment. I learned how to look cheerful while under the table I stuck a fork into the back of my hand. I became a virtuoso of deceit. It wasn't pleasure I was after, it was knowledge. I consulted the strictest moralist to learn how to appear, philosophers to find out what to think, and novelists to see what I could get away with. And in the end, I distilled everything to one wonderfully simple principle. Win or die. So you're infallible, are you? If I want a man, I have him. If he wants to tell, he finds that he can. That's the whole story. And was that our story? All right. That is the whole story. She said, mm -hmm. Beth admits that Glenn Close, she did some fine, uh, top tier acting in the late 80s, early 90s. Fatal Attraction. You know, that was. You know, like my, the funny thing is, is I, I just never watched a whole ton of stuff with Glenn Close, but there is one thing that I recently rediscovered damages. The show damages mm, was that's incredible. good. I have seen some of that. That's, I have seen some of that. Uh, that's one of those shows where you want to wonder how we got into this crazy serialized <laughs> world of like away from the serialized television and into these ongoing stories. That show is crazy. Her and Rose Byrne and Rose, Rose Byrne. Rose Byrne's a great show, actress. One of the things about that show is they went out of their way to hire 
largely comedic actors in a serious role. Like you get Ted like Danson very is in that, right? Yeah, is you get not? like okay. very serious Ted Danson. You get very serious John Goodman. Like it's it's great. Well, um, I think you and I both have strong appreciation for film and TV, mm -hmm. and we try to weave in a little of it here and there. It'd be cool to talk more about it sometime. So until then. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at uh, at uh, more of this Jada stuff uh, from today or yesterday, whenever it came out. All right, here we go. Uh, share screen. Yes, yes. Back. Okay. 1997 denied the gossip apart. Yeah. All right, a little here. It was a divorce. So from the year 2016, which is seven years ago now, <laughs> y'all yes. have been... <laughs> apart yeah but in public the couple who married in 1997 denied the gossip about their marriage this interview on bravo's <laughs> watch funny. what happens live with andy cohen was taped a year after will and jada separated so uh, how long have you guys been together uh 23 years wow. Wow. that's amazing how do you keep it hot um how do I we don't uh, you know, watch uh, how evasive she is. Maybe here. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm baffled, really. Yeah, right. Over the next several years, you know, Jada and Will. It's kind of interesting to me how, for whatever reason, she. I have a theory about this, but for whatever reason, she couldn't bring herself to tell the lie there when it would have been the easiest thing to do. And she's already. They're already putting on a charade by yeah. passing themselves off as being married. So what was up with that? I think, I think based on some of the discussions i've seen with him over the years red table talk and all that and her talking about her dissatisfaction i think that she's one of these types who feels like he is not he's not hot enough in the bedroom or not edgy enough or whatever like you know and there are a lot of couples or a number of couples where um that one partner thinks that the other is not adventurous enough or edgy enough or they're just not they're they're not as into it or whatever in the bedroom yeah. and sometimes it is actually the women who feel this way right and i and and maybe oftentimes but anyway i think that she i think here's the deal is that she always felt that he was not quite good enough for her particularly being a narcissist and i think that she feels like she's entitled to some kind of really wild you know sexually yeah. edgy adventurous thing and that was part of her having sex with fucking her her son's friend i think yeah. also was the taboo <laughs> nature of it and what have you and so i think her not not admitting not saying what she could have just said was yeah everything's great it's hot or whatever you know i think yeah, she, she didn't lie. want I think she didn't want to give him even the satisfaction yeah. of that like she wanted to communicate something negative about him she wants to tear him down yeah, like there's a golden opportunity there to prove out to everyone what a good actress you are. <laughs> and, but but to do that would to have made him look like he was actually good in bed and she couldn't even bring herself to do that. Nope, she couldn't. And again, she knows, as most women do, that if someone asks you, like I've never been asked that question before because there was no reason for it to ever come up. But but we as women know that if the topic of our our men's sexual performance ever comes up, that that is going to be something that's going to be, whether it should be or not, like deeply important to them, like how they're perceived. Yeah. It's just a masculine thing. And I don't think it's a bad thing necessarily. And so for her, knowing that this guy is a big star and a lot of his appeal is based on his masculinity and all of that. And she's going to mm. say in front of the world, ah. <laughs> I don't know. I just think it's awful, man. It's awful. Um, okay. C Chris Stewart. I wanted to recognize you here because uh, Chris says, I must say the, I hate Jada title caught my attention. Just turned on YouTube. She's a phony. That's what I see anyway. So I'm glad that that worked. I didn't put Brett's photo or name <laughs> on it because I was afraid that maybe, maybe I still don't know Brett very well. And I was afraid that maybe he wouldn't be behind th that sentiment or didn't want to, maybe you wouldn't want to broadcast it maybe so openly. And so I left you off, but then, but then you responded immediately and you're like, Oh no, I just reposted it. So yep. <laughs> Repost. Yeah. Like uh, if somebody's going to come in there and take it that seriously, they uh, they've already got a problem with you. That's so. true. We don't need them. And we don't need them in this room. That's mm -hmm. very true. Okay. And by the way, I want to take the opportunity to uh, remind people about your show and I'm going to post the link and my mods, 
bless them. They have been uh, posting stuff throughout. But uh, but I want to remind people that Brett has a show five days a week. And uh, at what time again? Remind us. Yes, guys. Uh, check out Pop Culture Crisis, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is noon Pacific. We talk a lot of the same stuff. Pop culture, new like movies, entertainment, a lot of celebrity stuff like this. We did cover this story this week generally. Uh, today we had on a special guest, Tony Merkel. Uh, he runs a company called Merkel Media, and he has his own podcast called The Confessional. Uh, we were on for about three hours in, in 20 minutes today. So it was, oh, a, wow. it was a good show. Yeah, it was a long show today. Uh, we all like, we read all the super chats. So once we were done, we just rolled right through and we talked to everybody and it was a lot of fun. So guys, like if you like talking about, especially stuff like this, cause this is exactly the type of stuff that we get into a lot of stories like this. Yep. So if this is interesting to you, definitely check us out. Uh, it's just look up pop culture crisis right there on YouTube. Yeah, I think that as more people learn about your show, they'll be checking you out uh, because I had not, uh, I didn't know about your show um, until recently. And I, I thought, oh, this is really interesting because there's a lot of overlap with things that I'm interested in. And I think that you two, like you and, and Mary, you have your own distinctive takes and nobody would, I don't think, mistake you for having uh, cookie cutter opinions, but it's, a, but it works really well and you have a nice a rapport. So people should check you out. It's really, and y'all laugh a lot. Like there's, a, I think your show's generally more lighthearted than mine just because I, oh yeah, I'm like, covering me too and stuff. <laughs> we, well, we, that's the thing. Like we end up covering those stories a lot of the time that stuff comes up. Unfortunately, like there are days and th this is how jaded you can really get in that industry. Like, there are days, you know, when you're when you're doing your when you're looking through the news and you're figuring out what you're going to focus your show on that day and you just go, Ugh, who did what to who now? Like <laughs> yeah. who it's just another day in Hollywood means that somebody has been attacked, some poor or woman claiming is, something uh, is claiming or, that yeah. something happened which may or may not have happened, who knows, but we get All into right. it a lot. We have a lot of fun. Right. No, you do. And it is a really fun show and yeah. I really enjoyed being there. And 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 by the way, uh, in case anyone was wondering, because I, I did see a question or two along these lines, they do not have, um, ha they they only have physical guests on their show, which I was very honored and, yeah. and so happy that you actually flew me out there. I was like, this is awesome. But in case people wonder, a couple of people have wondered, why is it that he's not having you on his show, but he doesn't have um, a show outside of pop culture crisis. And they did have me on, they flew me out there and I yep. got a great trip to Washington. <laughs> that was nice. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. We, we do like, we, we have like Monday through Thursday, like Monday and Tuesday tend to be just me and Mary Wednesday and Thursday, Sarah and Kara show up on, on Wednesday, Phil Bonte from the band. All that remains comes in on Thursday. He obviously, he works here because the company is through Tim cast. So we'll have other guests, you know, people who work for the company, those days and then fridays we do bring in special guests from outside uh, outside the company it's a great it's a great yeah. series of shows and i'm yeah. sure a lot of people are familiar so yeah. okay so we're going to continue on with uh, with more of this ridiculousness and we will in a moment we are going to move off jay to pink it uh, if you have been enjoying this though you can go back i'm going to immediately post this live stream when it's yeah. uh, finished and you can go back and watch it all right, all right there we go. <coughs> oops sorry i'm gonna put it on Go back to her crazy laughing. Over the next several amazing. How do you keep it hot? Um, how do I keep it hot? Uh, yeah. I do it with his friends yeah. and, our, and our kids' friends. Our kids' friends. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, right. Over the next. She several. wanted to say we don't. And Will kept up the yes. appearance of a committed married couple. They even faced a scandal when Jada had what she called an entanglement with a family friend. Neither let the public know they had already split. So I guess my question is, I feel smiling. like you're a straight talker. I am. Except you're not sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Except you're a so fucking liar do sometimes. That? Like, what was the reason? I think just not being ready yet. Mm still trying to figure out between the two of us. Yeah. She's not ready yeah. to disclose the reality of her situation, but she is ready to disclose to to disclose and pass off and expose a false reality but pass it off as reality. Like it's yeah. just so, so ridiculous. <laughs> the world we live in is crazy now. Like it's like when when you see any of these stories about any of these celebrities, you're never going to really know how much of it is actually true. I am kind of fascinated at the idea that she could have kind of absolved herself. She seems of, to of all of this shit. 
<laughs> but I'm saying like she could she I, I'm actually saying like in a very real sense if when all of this stuff came out about her in this in Alcina, mm -hmm. she could have absolved herself of the behavior of being called a bad person by saying like look we're not even together anymore oh but she didn't so do you think here's a good question then do you oops do you think that the reason that they haven't that they had not disclosed it that they maintained this facade do you think it was because it was so important to him to maintain this facade or do you think for her because i do remember again this is something else from his his biography that i read and look you can't take people's uh celebrities or anyone's biography as gospel of what yeah. really happened but you can take it as a kind of a window into their thinking on the relationship if they're intending it to be an honest look so anyway he said in his autobiography that and, and also in an interview i saw this in an interview too that he because of his fractured childhood that he was obsessed i mean he described it in a way that was it was obsessive he was obsessed with building a perfect family yeah. and i so i wonder if he just could not come to terms with the dissolution of the family and it's just she's just kind of like stringing him along like what do you think is going on there or is i mean it's partially that but it's also like to a lot of celebrities maintaining the image of a perfect family is every bit as important yeah. as the family itself right it does kind of matter you know how you're perceived by the public especially if his if what happened to him as a child is public knowledge and mm -hmm. he's aware of how people might he might be self-conscious and, and wonder how people look at him knowing that they may know about his childhood now that would be ridiculous too given the level of his stardom like most people aren't thinking about stuff like that but the human mind isn't rational. he's obsessed with it though yeah. yeah and you know it's it it's amazing to me sometimes how celebrities can get you would think that they would they would filter out all criticism and stuff they get but they can get sometimes focused on even particular criticisms and i see this with myself too like mm -hmm. we talked the other day about how what we do we get a lot of criticism and most of the time you know say 99 percent of the time shrug it off no big deal but every now and then uh, you know there's there's stuff each week that kind of gets through and it's interesting how like yeah i don't i don't see or pay attention to 90 percent of it or whatever but but there are still things consistently where i'm like Ugh. so maybe he if he's just really obsessed with the idea of a family and if he he says he didn't want to fail to he kept yeah. talking about how and i think this is something that keeps a lot of people together is they don't they don't want to look at their lives and they don't want to see it as a failure i wish there was a way that we could that society could celebrate marriage and could celebrate commitment and could and could encourage people not to take those things lightly but at the same time where people could learn to see even failed relationships as not necessarily being just a, like a waste because i think it keeps people in bad relationships longer they keep like hanging on for something i don't know yeah maybe not but yeah. okay let's see what else uh keep going they gotta say how to be in partnership right and in regards to how do we present that to people you know mm. and <laughs> we hadn't figured that out during our walk in baltimore jada reflected <laughs> okay on i just have breakup. to say why She's saying here that they had a hard time figuring out how to keep up the appearance while in reality there was no relationship and they couldn't figure that out. Yeah, it's because you're not supposed to make that work. Yeah. When your relationship dissolves, then yes, the facade of a relationship goes away because it's not there anymore. Like, it's funny how she's like, she is, I think she is so like far down the creek of messed up thinking, delusional thinking that she really thinks that this makes sense to people, the strategizing when she says, well, it was really hard because, you know, we didn't have a relationship anymore. We broke up, but we had to keep up this facade of court. Like, you know, yeah. of course you, you can't tell the truth. We have to keep up this facade. <laughs> what about the poor kids? Like, I just think about the oh. poor kids. As annoying as Jaden Smith is, like these poor kids almost have an excuse to be annoying because their parents have deeply damaged them. Yeah, I wanted to, that ties into something actually I want to say here, uh, because Andrina and I see a, a few other people in the Andrina! comments. Oh, Andrina wasn't here. It's great. Yes! I see a few other people in the comments echoing this, and I want to respond to it. He said, I feel like most people don't stick it out anymore. And someone else says, um, Elophilia says, I like your name, uh, true, true vows don't mean anything anymore to anyone. So here's the thing I think is that 
I, I certainly, like, I certainly know all the research that says, uh, I've seen it, that says that divorce, generally speaking, on the whole, it's, it's bad for children. And there's a, there's a really strong argument that, uh, that too many people take it too lightly and get divorced and they shouldn't, et cetera, et cetera. I, my own personal experience comes into this will inflects my discussion of these things somewhat yeah. because my mom was in a marriage. She stuck it out for 26 years because with a man who was, you know, he's dead now, God rest his soul, but he was very emotionally abusive and he cheated on her and stuff and not that not a great dad. And, um, and she stuck it out with him for 26 years because she was very devout and she felt like you're supposed to stick it out and divorce is bad for your children. Now, maybe in hindsight, it still was better that she stayed with him. Maybe it provided some stability that we would not have had. Um, otherwise, I don't know, but, but I feel like she probably should have left him. And so that's kind of what I was getting that there with like the fact that I look at Will Smith and I think that this is actually one case where unlike the typical Hollywood couple, like he really has tried to make it work and he has stuck it out all of these years. And it just makes me, and maybe it is better for the kids. They stayed together. I don't know, but it just makes me sad for this guy to see him his wife just like dragging him through the mud and laughing about it and demeaning him publicly. Like it's just, um, it's gotta be even more damaging for the kids to be like that. Now to them, it's completely normal to fat, to create a fake version of this. Uh, because what it says in a lot of ways is that the public perception is more important than the actual relationship. Yeah. And that's damaging too. That's a, cr- it's crazy making, behavior that is a crazy paradigm and perspective um and you know i think that something else that probably has got to be damaging for the kids is that or or i think one aspect of this that's really damaging too is like the insidious nature of it that i think that it's being packaged in such a way that the kids probably don't even realize there's anything wrong yeah. or weird about it. And so there's probably not any space for them, particularly with Jada, who I think is really narcissistic. <laughs> there's probably not any space for those kids to say to their mom, what the fuck is going on here? Why are you, why have we been living this charade? Why are you and dad talking about each other like this? Why did you sleep with my, my friend? Like all of this <laughs> stuff, like, <laughs> like in a normal uh, relationship, a normal family, a functional family, these would be just obvious things that would be that the kids would be outraged about or upset or asking questions. And I feel like the way that this has been done, that Jada probably feels like there's nothing wrong with any of it. No. I and like it, it is it, an image does matter. Cause remember what Will Smith said earlier in that horrible clip where she's basically holding him hostage. She says, he says, my social media presence is my bread and butter mm-hmm. because that's his image. His public image is right. extremely important to him. Right. Right. Okay. Continuing on. I just can't believe some of the stuff she's saying. She is really, Jada Pinkett is really, she's really mm-hmm. delusional or, or, or messed up. I don't know. A fracture. Oh, uh, why a fracture? That, that relationship fracture. Oh, uh, why a fracture? That, that's a lot of things. Yeah. And I think by the time we got to 2016, we were just exhausted with trying. I think we were both kind of still stuck in our fantasy of what we thought the other person should be. Jada says she considered a legal divorce, but could never go through with it. I made a promise that there will never be a reason for us to get a divorce. We will work through whatever. And I just haven't been able to break that promise. Mm. But you still live. She makes it sound like she lives separately. Mm. Yeah, like now, what this does now is this prevents him from moving on. What's that? Say it again. It prevents him from moving on. She makes it seem like she's the one who won't do it. See, I assumed based on what I've read and seen and stuff that it was him. Although, although when they were talking about uh, what happened with August Alcina and and that and when she, she they did say that he got sick of her, like you got sick of my ass or whatever. So maybe he does get pushed to the point <laughs> where he finally says no and then she's like clinging to him or whatever i mean i don't know we know this is what narcissists do like we know that narcissists get people into this cycle where just when people get up the the nerve or the clarity of sight clarity of thought to leave somebody then they find some way of of hooking him back in so i don't i don't know but it's almost (laughs) vampiric like like she doesn't need she doesn't need someone else because uh, all she needs is to know that she's still draining the life force out of him 
and she gets her space to do it. So he doesn't get to move on. Like if she loved him right now, right? What she mm -hmm. would do is divorce him knowing that he needs that to move on. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm I'm pay I'm not I, I'm no expert on any of this stuff. But no, it feels no. like if he can't if he can't bring it uh, if he can't bring himself to do this, uh, and he's agreed to this because he's stuck in this notion of the perfect family. If she loved him, what she'd say is, "Look, we're clearly not working." need to get on with their life and I need to get on with my life. And if they were being merciful to one another, they would do that and allow themselves to move on and try to find someone else. Him hopefully go website that says women who are nothing like Jada Pinkett Smith.com <laughs> perhaps like, and then find like literally any woman that's just not her. Like just go online, any millennial woman and be like, look, I was in the movie independence day. Welcome to earth. Like <laughs> he could have anybody he wants. You know, I somebody reminded me of this about how she said that she was basically forced to marry him or drag kicking him screaming down the aisle. I'm yeah. gonna, let's look at this uh at this report or hopefully this is part of the uh part of the interview actually, but I just see a little bit of this and then we'll move on. So upset that I had to Yeah, here we go. And I was so oh. upset that I had to have a wedding. Yeah. I was so pissed. We I we... went crying down the freaking aisle. I'll get married. Yeah. Yeah. Cried the whole way. <laughs> and look, there's something too, and I I can say this from prior experience of being uh, in a relationship with a narcissist for uh, for a little while, but also, but mostly from my dad, who was like ta like textbook narcissist personality disorder. Um, you laugh when you are when you're in a, an abusive situation, or if it's just even emotionally abusive. Um, you get sort of uh you get kind of hardened to the situation and you laugh at a lot of things that really are not funny that are heartbreaking and you know there is something to that saying you know to laugh to keep from crying but people who and i'm sure you know you and can relate everybody can relate to a degree but people who are in these sick twisted situations because everything is so sick and their view of the world now has been so twisted by this narcissistic person that they're with and they're so you know to use a popular term gaslit they really start finding humor and laughing about their own situation about what this person is doing to them and so i just want to rewind it just a touch here and just look at the way that he's like really like going he's out comical. of his way yeah he's you like, yeah, he's like and, slapping his knees yeah he's like, oh, oh, oh down the freaking aisle. I'll get married. Yeah. Cried the whole way. <laughs> even the, like, even Jaden's like, I have no he respect for you. He's shaking his head. No, you know what? That is such a great point. And you know what she's saying here? What the, what the story she's telling is that she's saying that she was crying negative tears because she's so on the day of their wedding that basically she's coming down the aisle and she's mm. crying because she so doesn't want to marry this man. He is, I have to one more time. I'm sorry. It's just jaw dropping. He is feigning laughter or he's so she's got him so messed up in the head that he's laughing and the kid, you're right. I've never noticed that the kid knows it's not cool. And I was no so respect. upset that I had to have a wedding. Yeah. I was so pissed. We, I we... went crying down the freaking aisle. I'll get married. Get married. Yeah. <laughs> the whole way <laughs> yeah. like Jaden had no respect for his dad after that Jaden had no respect for his dad after that look it's it's also like the the, the romantic version of this story is like look i didn't want to get married uh and then on my wedding day like i you know i realized how much i loved him and it was happily ever after this is not that this is not the fairy tale. No, ending. this is well, and and obviously, what we're learning now, uh, th there is no resolution or reconciliation. That this is basically um, a a significant moment on the path to the dissolution of the relationship. You know, I feel like again, my own personal experience here, it, it gives me some insight on this, but then also it makes her behavior so perplexing. Like, look, I'm not, uh, I'm not legally married. And I've been with the person that I love and relationship with for years and years and years. But because of, I have my own issues with marriage because my parents had a horrible marriage and I got a bad taste in my mouth about it. And I've just never had a desire to, even though basically that's what our relationship is. So I, I understand, and I'm not saying that's a good attitude. I'm just saying that's how it is. I understand someone having reluctance about their marriage, but I would not 
have, if I were with a guy that, that really desperately wanted to be legally married, I would not have him come and sit there and I would not laugh and have and force him to laugh about how I, you know, cried so much because I didn't want to marry him. And I mean, it's just so disrespectful. It's amazing. Yeah. They're doing it. Okay. Yeah. Keep going. We'll watch this. We only got married. I didn't want to get married. I really didn't. I really didn't want to get married, but... We only got married because Gammy was crying. I was married. under so much pressure, you know, being a young actress, oh, being young, and, and I was just and like, pregnant. pregnant. Wait, they that, said we only got married because who? That is Willow. That's the that's not Jaden. That's Willow. Oh, okay. It was one of, yeah, one of their kids. But wait, didn't he just say they only got married because someone... Who are they Got saying? pregnant? Okay, I'm going to rewind that. But we do have a super chat one recognized. Carnell again, thank yes. you so much. Wow, what a great supporter. And by the way, these are... Uh, I do split everything um, with him. Uh, during Will, Will stand up routine, he openly acknowledged that he's lost control of his home. It's really demeaning and wild to see him use it in his routine. Sent you the clip on IG. Okay, I'm going to find that. I'm going to go away for uh, for a minute and find that. Well, you you want to talk for a second? I'm going to find it, yeah. Brett. You got I can to. talk for a second because <laughs> what they're doing here is disturbing. It is actually worse to me that they include the kids in all of this stuff. I think that if I was the parents, if I was a celebrity couple, and I understood that the path I had chosen here, that I'm going to go and we're going to create this strange facsimile of a, of a relationship that has since dissolved and portray it forward to the rest of the world, that's one thing entirely if you've created a world on your own where it's just the two of you where you're not doing anything with any where there's no kids involved but as soon as you bring children into this you're supposed to protect the children from these types of things and this type of deception is not the type of thing that won't be learned so there's every reason to believe that when Jaden and when Willow go on to theoretically get married or have kids or whatever, whatever has you, right. they will find themselves in a situation where they're like, well, why can't we fake it? Why These are horrible matter? precedents. You're it, right. It's not, it's not the type of thing because children learn from what their parents do. And, you know, imagine also that you're one of these kids and you like you fall in love, uh, you know, with somebody who's not in the Hollywood bubble, who's not a celebrity. Uh -huh. And you're like, uh, they're like, how do you explain what this? You crazy? Mean you're fake? <laughs> what do you mean your parents faked it? Like that's that's insane. Uh, but you know that's that's the world that they've um. I guess that's the world that they've chosen. But I don't feel like it's fair that the kids have been brought into this in a way that they didn't deserve. No, it's not. Hey, Carnell, I could not find the uh, DM from you and my recent DMs on Instagram. Did you send it to Brett? Maybe Brett, you want to check your? Oh, he might. He might have sent it to me. Brett, just send it to me, and I can put it up. Um, um let me let me check or you can here. just post the link here in the comments either way mm -hmm. I can put it up. Yep. yeah no they are someone said uh l ophelia says um they are learning nasty habits and then andrina says and what kind of mom dates her her son's friend i mean yeah that's disgusting behavior and look here's the thing like i defend i'll defend a lot of people's technical rights to do things or i'll say you know even though this is gross or inappropriate to certain things you know 17 year old dating an older man it's i don't think it's pedophilia et cetera, et cetera. but like there's no, there's just no way to defend it being okay. A mom sleeping with her son's mentally incompetent friend, like all of it's just. Ugh. <laughs> Does that mean that Will Smith now has a pass to go get one of Jaden's like uh, adult, like female friends? Well, isn't that a great Inqu point? Can inquiring you imagine... minds want to know can whether you he's imagine... allowed to do that. Whether well, he's can allowed you... to do that. Can you imagine the outcry on that if Will Will Smith had were to say that one of his young friends, you know, one of his children's young friends, you know, a woman, a girl, not only a girl in her twenties, young early twenties or whatever, but a girl who is apparently psychologically incompetent, uh, and and and. I mean, they were talking about him like he was mentally ill, like they had to step in and help because he just couldn't get he couldn't get things together, couldn't get his life together. So I don't know. Um, oh, Brett's back. I think he got kicked off. Sorry. Brett. I just I just sent you the link in the okay. in the chat there. That should be it. Oh, it's in the chat. Oh, perfect. Yep. OK, here we go. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm, private chat. All right. One second here. I'm gonna take this off. Stop screen, then right back, share screen. Okay, here we go. Let's go. 
Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. The crazy thing is I'm more nervous about doing stand up than I am about. Oh, uh, where is it in this? Sorry, uh, Carnell, let us know when you get a chance um, where on this clip it is. But we will uh, watch it. We will get there. <laughs> so just let us know. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I have not. I've tried to avoid this topic because I find this woman so ridiculous. And I find this whole charade that they've been pulling even though I didn't know that they were not married anymore or that they were separated, but I, I, I felt like the whole thing was kind of a charade to some extent or another, kind of like you. So I didn't want to pay any attention to this, but I just feel like her behavior, Jada Pinkett Smith, she just keeps ratcheting it up in terms of how obnoxious it is. And like the, and like, I feel like she's just basically emotionally abusing him in front of everyone on national, international television. <laughs> yep. Every day. It's uh, you see a guy who was the height of cool, in the 90s who really was the definition of cool in all his roles and you see what he's been reduced to uh, like i i do in fact love a good comeback story so i want to see him have like a, a renaissance mm -hmm. later i mm -hmm. want that yeah carnell says 17 minutes okay all right here we go here we go 17 minutes okay here. <coughs> uh, okay we'll start up a little early Third episode, um, I'm gonna have sex with Kathy Griffin. <laughs> Dave made me say that. Dave made me say that. <laughs> it's really a new time in my life. You know, my kids all grown, my my family, they all doing their thing. And you know, and um, I've kind of lost control of my house. Like Jada, she's shooting her show, The Red Table Talk. Have y'all seen that? Red Table Talk. Oh, yeah, you saw it, yeah. No, you can enjoy it because she's not telling all your business. <laughs> yeah, Jada giving it up on Red Table Talk, boy. Mm. Sorry, baby. Because <laughs> my wife, Jada's here. She's right here. I wasn't expecting Jada to be here. I wasn't expecting. I wasn't expecting to have to say it in front of you. <laughs> you can't get a script. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Notice he's oh, doing man. the um, he's touching his chest oh, again. Uh, Even Jaden, yeah, like Jaden, that's Oops. that's my dog. Jaden was my one family member. I thought I was going. To all right, sorry, we'll, we'll, we'll back it up. What were you going to say, though? I see, Notice he, he's touching his chest in the same way he was when he was, um, you know, kind of comforting himself in the same way. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. like kind of self-soothing thing. Okay, yeah. I already went just a touch. We'll go back. Cab. You can't get a script. I'm not... <laughs> I guess he kind of. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh man. Even Jaden, like Jaden, that's that's my dog. Jaden was my one family member I thought I was gonna have. He got this new joint icon. I don't know if y'all heard that. What you call an icon living? Start a record label Miss Fist. Yo, that joint is crazy. He recorded it in my house, put it out, and never said <laughs> to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I sorry, Marnell. I had I forgot what I I even forgot what the we were supposed to be listening for. I was so just kind of wrapped up in it. I don't want to I don't want to get a copyright uh, zing. So should I keep watching more? To, to this, what was the point? I'm he does. I mean, he does look like instantly more uncomfortable. Like his voice got. Oh, bigger he was and saying she was uncomfortable. Yeah. He's definitely so. I this is what I see, Carnell. Is I see that he is that everything when she's around it revolves around her and he's hypersensitive and he's hyper like alert and which is common with a narcissist and so i think that could have been some of what was going on that night is she probably look she probably when they uh, that night i mean the oscars yeah. i have a theory that especially and this to me makes sense now that i know that they were separated and have been having all these problems i think that she probably is the type narcissistically who anything that she does for him, any favor that she feels like she's doing for him or going out of her way or whatever, including keeping up this facade um, for Oscar night, you know, yeah. she probably puts him through hell 
uh, that she probably put him through hell that night, like getting ready and whatever, you know, stressing out or like, look at what I'm doing for you. And I'm going to be on your arm, even though, you know, you've ruined our relationship or whatever she probably says to him, but I'm going to go out and I'm going to put on a good show and whatever. And he probably already is kind of emotionally on eggshells with her. And so the alopecia, when, when Chris Rock made that comment and, uh, that, sort of linked to that or, or what have you and it probably it probably triggered that and we'll say maybe he's thinking yeah. like she's gonna give me hell for this i don't know yeah it's uh i feel bad for him in, in a lot of ways because it really does feel like it, it's one of those situations he'll never be able to win like there is no winning in these situations and especially not after that long you could like no. like people are saying like he, he's looking down a lot if it's his first time doing stand-up and he's just kind of uncomfortable with it I, I think that's a fair thing to say that he might just not be comfortable with what he's doing there because stand-up can from what i understand and what i can imagine yeah. is just unbelievably terrifying if you've never done it before yeah, probably so. Like any kind of performing, if you haven't done it in a live yeah. in a live crowd, um, I wanted to ask you. Somebody brought this up earlier. Do you think there's any chance that the alopecia is fake? That she's faking it? I don't know. That's uh, that's that that's deep into the conspiratorial. I know, that would be a, that would be. Holy. It's it. also it's also one of the ones that would never get leaked because there's no benefit to her to to revealing that it was fake, right? Oh, now, if sure. she said uh, like my doctor told me that Will's stupidity caused my alopecia, she would love <laughs> to say that. She would love to say that, right? You know, I, so here's what I, I think about that. Like, I am very, always very reluctant to call out people for faking medical conditions or to raise that possibility I, because I think that it's all, if someone has a medical condition, it's already hard enough. And then you're adding on to that, then people questioning it. And yeah. what, and what reason is that, you know, I question the me too stuff, me too allegations, because there's someone on the other end of that, who's getting hurt. If it's a false allegation, if yeah. women were just going out and they weren't talking about particular men and it wasn't being attached to particular men, it would still be a problem because even generally against men, it's, it's harmful if it's not true. The alopecia thing, who is it really harming if she is faking it? So it's not something that I'm, I'm just like really into the idea of pursuing, but let me just say this though. I don't think, given now what we have seen of her and her behavior, I do think that there's something really wrong with this woman in terms of her, as you put it, possible um, addiction to attention. Mm -hmm. And I think that she has a knack for explaining away her own behavior to herself. Like yeah. the way that she explains away her entanglement to August Alsina, that she was, by by fucking him, she was providing mental health care. I mean, that's the kind <laughs> of stuff that like men say, that we, we're so down on men for saying that, men who say that kind of ridiculous bullshit to women. <laughs> Is that where I'm supposed to say like, where were these mental health professionals when I was in trouble? Oh my gosh, all those years that I went through, I went through rehab and getting myself together and no women seemed to come forward and offer to have sex with me to help me with my mental health struggles what is this world coming to uh yes that is your out that is your your moment to say that yes. no well um uh, you know you just you should have been friends with uh will smith's kid i guess I, that friendset. was the problem i, I should have known famous people <laughs> damn it rebel bird says she has one spot on the top of her head you don't see in this picture i think it's just a scar because it has like a line I, I know that she's also said that she does have hair on her head that she shaved it because it was starting to thin out you know just like there's a lot of guys who yeah. who do that take that strategy as well so again i i don't know and it's not something that i would spend any more time than we're going to spend here you know briefly yeah to talking about it but i don't think it's a crazy thing to ask or, or to to ponder and i think that someone like her clearly has some kind of an issue with attention <coughs> lying like pulling on like like she now has admitted and this is what's crazy too i think you said something actually earlier like this she has now admitted to the world that for years she put on in, in a highly produced, sophisticated way, she put on an entire charade about her life, about something, about a fundamental aspect of her <laughs> life, and she and she passed it off and and lied to everyone. So, like, is that something that she really thinks long term is going to be a net gain? Like, that's what I wonder too. Is about Brett. What do you think is up with the timing of this? Because book. she's gone this long. Is it is it just about I guess selling the book? book you know? I'll tell you what, though. Will Smith goes to shop now, and he's going to get himself 
uh, new furniture and he sees a red table and he's like, no way, no red table <laughs> for me, not doing it. Well, and the title of the book, Worthy. Worthy. You know, she is so focused. Here's the other thing. But I guess the last thing I wanted to say about this is that um, I'm amazed, but we were able to actually get two hours out of this BS. Um, she is so focused on, on, the, on what I've seen of Red Table Talk and, and so forth. She is so focused on this idea of like psychological healing and sort of like new age, you know, I'm working on myself and all that. And this kind of gets back to, I wanted to bring it up because this gets back to something that you were talking about a couple of weeks ago about how you think that our society has become too celebratory of, uh, an undeservedly so often of, of therapy and the yeah. way that this seems to have just really infiltrated our culture. I don't know. I, I feel like a lot of it with therapy is there's like a weird, enjoyment to talk about like first of all i think a lot of it is like like i i've done uh dialectic behavioral therapy i've done cognitive behavioral therapy when i was getting out of rehab right so the in a lot of ways certain types of therapy that have something to do they have a goal they have an end date you have a plan that you're working through is mm -hmm. different than what you see now which i think is a lot of is like we're just in a narcissistic culture and mm -hmm. in a lot of ways a broken world so these therapists are making tons of money on that. And that's not to say that you should not seek mental help, health, uh, mental no, health, I know uh, that. help. But what that. I'm saying is that celebrities, there's like this weird culture of like talking about how much they love going to their therapist and in talking about their therapist, the same way that somebody used to talk about their priest for confession mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. And it's like a worship of self for a lot of it. Also, didn't she, um, didn't they talk about how her and her kids all her will and her kids all did ayahuasca together? <laughs> like, uh, I, 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 now I, I think I'm kind of remembering something about that. And yeah. I know there'll be people in the audience who I know a couple of people, a couple of my fans who are, um, who are really advocates of ayahuasca and ibogaine and things like that. And again, we're not, we're not uh, detracting from or criticizing the things that people do to improve their mental health. But I think for this woman, Every, I think that it's self-indulgent. I think for some people, it can be like psychologically masturbatory and self-indulgent. Yes. In the sense that they're not, they're not really improving. That what they're doing actually is they are using it now as another way to rationalize their behavior or to stay stuck in their in their bad patterns yeah bad behavior longer it's kind of like at the end of uh the sopranos for those of who remember it the yep. in, the um the therapist that has been seeing the gangster for years and years doing all this therapy with him she finally comes to the conclusion at the end and she dumps him as a patient because she decides that actually he's not coming in every week to get help or to change that he's coming in to basically go through this exercise that makes him feel good and makes him feel like he's mastering, you know, the art of, of, of looking into his psyche and, and looking deep into his psyche. And I think that's what she's doing. Jada Pinkett Smith. Yeah. She thinks that she's really in touch with herself and with uh, God and deeper spirituality and all that. It's not. It's not yeah. Good. I'm, I'm not trying in any way to say I've got to that. run and get my phone yeah. because someone, I think PayPal'd us and left a, yeah. a comment. So I'll be right yeah. back. Yeah, like I'm not in any way saying that therapy is is a bad thing. I'm saying that and maybe it's partially for me is because I see a lot of like algorithmically on social media, a lot of the content that I see is a lot of things. It's people who make who, they write tweets about their therapist. And a lot of it seems like it, it's a way to make content out of trauma dumping. Uh, which is a term that a lot of them use now. And for a lot of it, it just feels like worship of self. So I'm not in any way saying that going to seek help from a professional is a bad thing. It's just when you, it, it could even be on me that like algorithmically, I get fed a lot of these stories or I get fed a lot of these uh, Instagram graphics or tweets or infographics that are kind of... Um, they're exultant on the idea of therapy, but it's always in the nature of saying like, look, my life is more screwed up than everybody else's because I learned this in therapy, which always comes off as unbelievably cynical and self-indulgent uh, and not introspective in the way that looks like you're actually going to get help, but introspective just enough that it gives you content to create. Yeah. I just, um, <laughs> I heard you. Not a fan. Not a fan. I hear you on that. Okay. I, uh, I wanted to check for those who, um, who send tips via PayPal during the chat. I will read them just like if you send a super chat. Um, I don't read the last names unless you want me to for some reason. 
So uh, Vita says, uh, have you checked out HG Tudor's channel? He talks about how Jada is a narcissist. Very interesting. He goes in, oh, and it cuts you off for some reason on the message. But thank you for that and for the, the donation. So I have checked out HG Tudor's work, going back to Meghan Markle, because that was, you know, a big focus of his and I guess continues to be. And I, I really like it. I really think it's interesting. I approached him to do a collaboration and didn't hear back from him. And it's, it's fine. It happens all the time. But uh, I like his work. Have you checked him out, Brett? I have not. That's not somebody that I've heard of before. So he There's... is a self-described narcissist who oh. also talks about narcissism and so it's like you're getting an insider's perspective but it's, it's a british guy very well spoken um very interesting intelligent so he does he'll choose these different celebrity figures and talk about the signs of their narcissism there's a there's a chat here this isn't a super chat but i want to read it it's from it, yeah. kelly rob says don't trauma dump on me in quotes such psychobabble life is hard and pain is relative that's actually how i feel about it like i, I it's hard for me on these on streams like this like this, sometimes the stuff that i think in my head isn't always something that i'm going to that i'm going to share but a lot of times when people use terms like that i felt right. the same way i heard the term love when i heard love bombing uh -huh. i just rolled my eyes i'm like give me a freaking break you're an adult dude learn to deal <laughs> with it like i'm again i'm not trying to minimize no, what happens to anyone you. but a lot of the i actually like went on a rant with someone one time i said one of the problems of societies we've just given there are terms for everything now and there uh -huh. wasn't always a term for everything uh -huh. and i actually had this same feeling about like certain aspects of a addiction like the more you know about it the more insurmountable it feels in in a lot of ways i know that a lot of people take the opposite pr approach right where they say like the more you know about something the be the easier it is to defeat but mm -hmm. to me with a lot of things it's almost like if i if i give all this attention to it and try to figure out every aspect of it i make it a bigger <laughs> deal in my own head than it actually yeah. is yeah and i feel like a lot of the ways that we approach uh, our interactions our interpersonal communications if we give a label to everything Maybe one day your friend is just telling you a bunch of bad stuff that happened to them. Maybe they weren't trauma dumping. Maybe right. they were just, you know, does it need that label? Because now that it has that label, you're going to attach that label to anything that gets done when somebody does something that fits into that criteria. That person doesn't necessarily know what the hell trauma dumping is. And they don't have like evil intentions. Mm -hmm. It's I, I think that it can be more damaging at times than people realize. No, I think there's definitely a lot of legitimacy to that perspective. And look, this is something I read uh, a lot of uh, philosophy when I was in grad school. And I read a lot of uh, a guy named Foucault, who, as yeah. it turns out, Foucault had a very problematic sexual history and was a child abuser. So his, his private life had a lot of issues. But um, and, and there's a lot of issues with his philosophy, too. But he did have some interesting thoughts on how we how the modern world is now pathologizing everything and all behavior and and that when you affix a medical label to something, when you pathologize it in a clinical way, yeah. that you are actually you can do damage in that. And yeah. you can also and, and also that that can even be a way of infringing on people's freedoms in a way, because once you pathologize someone and you say, no, you're not just <coughs> experiencing this emotion, but you're sick. There's something wrong with yes, you. Yeah. You're giving up a sense of, to some degree, of, of autonomy or self-management. Yes. And we and society likes to do that now because we when we give away that that freedom, when we give away that sense of self or that individuality or your autonomy, because you say, look, I, I behave this way, but it's not my fault. I have mm -hmm. a pathology. I have a pathologized mm -hmm. condition. And, and that's uh, a lot of the things that I've been seeing lately that have kind of um, made me a little bit happy is like, I've seen a lot of the, the graphics that say stuff like, look, just because what happened to you is understandable, doesn't make your response acceptable. And society doesn't really do that now. Society says that if something bad happened to you, your behavior, however abhorrent, is okay. Right. Because right. something bad happened to you when you were younger. Unless you the, are a guy who's committed some kind of Me Too infraction. Yes. <laughs> it's like uh, right. I, had a, I had a friend. I just remember it was like one of the last times I ever used Facebook. Got into an argument with someone about like how food is so expensive. And the idea they were like, well, you know, like all the food is like uh, unless you're going to get the garbage at the grocery store, it's all super expensive, which I actually disagree with anyways. But the point is mm -hmm. I'm like the, he pointed he goes like, so what? That's still your problem. Deal with it. 
Like, Mm -hmm. yes, it's expensive. Yes, it's hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. It is still your responsibility as a fully grown adult. You're a big boy. You're a big Mm -hmm. girl. You can handle this on your own. Does it mean that it's necessarily the greatest thing in the world that you have to deal with it? No, but that's life. Right. And there's in and there's not nearly the tolerance anymore for just putting up with uh, on the part of some people for putting up with just the, the the BS of life. The fact that life is suffering, that a lot that basically all of our relationships are going to be not only deeply imperfect, but are going to go through periods where people are going to let us down. We're going to let other people down, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, you know, I, you've probably seen this, but and probably a lot of people have. But there was a there's a TikTok video or Instagram video yeah. that's going around where the guy uh, hits himself. He 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 walks past a, a wall and he he hits his face accidentally, or a door or something. And it it, uh, it goes from 1970 to yes. 80. Yeah. So if you were born in 70, he's like, Ugh, I'm yeah, fine. you have like yeah. no reaction. So he like hits. So the people born in 1970, he hits the wall and he's and he's just he bumps into it. And he's just like there's no reaction. Then 1980 bump into it and be kind of like you know like that yeah. 1990 making more of a like you know like more reaction and then 2000 like acting like completely like you're yeah. just completely destroyed by it and then getting out the phone right yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay we watched we okay on the show today we watched this clip uh anybody in the chat that watched pcc today will know what i'm talking about it's this clip of a lady at a starbucks and she says uh, she's like, uh, it, my, uh, this is the anniversary of when my husband was brutally murdered and, uh, you know, the world needs to be more kind and I want to pay for the people behind me. And she oh. starts bawling and putting the lady who's serving her on, on the camera with her. And she's like, people need to be more kind. I want to blah, blah. And she's like, she starts crying and I'm like, some, and I used to work like at a convenience but in, store. But not in a good way. Like there but, was something kind of like problematic or wrong. I, I, I used to work at a convenience store and that's absolutely a real phenomenon. People will just mm-hmm. open up to you. Mm-hmm. But there's something insidious about doing it on video mm-hmm. and promoting it on social media when it's this deeply personal thing that happened to you that makes right. you cry. Right. But, uh, or the video where the, the lady's on her ca- – or she's on her bed and she's going like this. She's like, ah, uh, and then like – Think about this. She had to set up a tripod. Right. She had to then light the room, go in there, get on the right. bed, hit like basically hit record on her phone, sit down to go, uh, and then start doing that. Edit it later, cut it down. Okay. Oh, I like, can't just have me walking into the bed. That wouldn't make any sense. So it's a whole production right. out of deeply personal right. human experiences. And there's just something dishonest about it. It's like in the quest for being for total transparency, in the quest in the social media age you to share every you aspect of your life with you the world. More artificial, yeah. It's even no. more exactly. It's even more artificial. No, it it does. And uh, this is something that some of my favorite philosophers, like the French philosopher Baudrillard, but others w- were getting at. And of course, he was the guy who inspired the Matrix. Uh, but the idea that. Um, we would, in our attempt to get more real than real, that actually we would get more and more artificial, that instead of yeah. making, I think this is interesting, instead of making media more authentically real, it would make real life more inauthentic. And there is something, look, just the very nature, and you and I know this yeah. from what we do every, you know, every day, um, there just, just the, by very nature of putting a camera in front of yourself changes you. It just, and, and it doesn't have to be like always like horrible or insidious. And sometimes it may, you can argue it's, it's better because there are times, you know, when I, I, I am given more interesting uh, speech yeah. or whatever, if I know I'm talking to people, but I'm just saying like, it does, it does change. And so what happens is I think we all kind of get sick, nauseated of the fact that, there's just we we can't perceive anything as authentic anymore because even when someone is crying on TV or on our computer, on our phone about something that is real, it could be yeah. someone crying about they were just diagnosed with cancer. It's real, but also there's this yep. this other thing mixed in of an uh, and it wasn't meant for artificiality, us. right? Exactly, it wasn't, it wasn't meant for us. There's okay, the, actually, that's that was my visceral reaction when Drew Barrymore interviewed Dylan Mulvaney. Mm-hmm. And she sits down next to uh, on the floor with Dylan Mulvaney and clasps mm-hmm. Dylan Mulvaney's hand. Well, they talk about all these traumatic things that have happened. And I said, pull back the camera. You're in a studio with a hundred people. There's bright lights on the yeah, all over you. It's hot. It's sweaty. Mm-hmm. The, you, you've got a, a director saying we're live in five, four, three, two. There is something 
insidious about the the people who are portraying a victim narrative to the world being able to do that so effortlessly to a public that doesn't realize that what they're seeing there is a essentially a facsimile of what actual human connection is done right. for your entertainment. It's why right. I actually, like we were talking about yesterday, I said, when I watch Dylan Mulvaney talk, it's one of the most deeply unsettling things I can see because I don't have a problem with Dylan Mulvaney's life choices. What I have a problem with is victimhood for profit. Right. Other than that, right. and Dylan Mulvaney's ability to weave a story eloquently uh, hit all of the high points, hit all of the low points and take you, the person listening to them on a ride. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's one thing if you're doing it in service of a story, in service mm -hmm. of a movie, in service of a mm -hmm. television show, but to do it in service of your own career, which is based almost entirely on victimhood. Mm -hmm. That's terrifying. So it's not the people that make you uh, that when you watch it, it seems fake that you need to worry about. It's the ones who are unbelievably good at drawing you in and getting you to feel real human emotions. Mm -hmm. You should be wary about what mm -hmm. they're trying to sell you. All of them. You hear that, y'all? You need to be leery of me at all. <laughs> no, seriously, it's true. And um I think that uh, it's something I think it'd be interesting for us to talk more about next time. I'd actually yeah. like to get into this more and uh, talk about maybe even I'll bring in a little bit of the philosophy and stuff that, that I like, but I think it'd be, I think it'd be very interesting to follow up more on this. I am tired. Uh, I've got a call in a night, but I want to thank everybody and remind and thank my mods again, uh, Vanessa, AJ, Rebel Bird, Laura B and my other friend who was standing in the, in the wings if, if needed, but, uh, and everybody go check out pop culture crisis. Yes. I'll put Do the it. link up there uh, again right now. Um, but his show, Five Days a Week, uh, with his very uh, lovely and opinionated uh, co-star, she's very, uh, very much uh, as much uh, or more entertaining than I am. Um, oh, I just lost the link. Look, she's the eloquent one. I'm not. I'm just no. there to like the <laughs> like. Uh, I'm I'm just kind of there. If you're actually looking for eloquent analysis of popular culture, it's Mary you want to watch, not me. So you're gonna have to come. You're gonna have to come to the show and uh, at 3 p.m. and watch it so that Mary oh. can so that you can actually see that she's that's, the smart one. That's oh, very also humorous. in I the like chat. It. In the chat, I saw people using the phrase "my heart is so full." I never want to hear that phrase again. It's awful. It's the worst of all of the meaningless phrases. So, chat, I'm going to need you to stop saying that because it's terrible. Never, never enjoy it when somebody leaves a post that says, my heart feels so full. I hate that. Oh, man. We all have our little, we all have our little, um, our little uh, predilections or things, and also things we don't like. I don't like the word plethora or plethora, however people want to use it. I'm not a we, fan. <laughs> we were talking this week about how apparently I've been saying prescient wrong my whole life. I always thought it was pronounced prescient, but it's not pronounced that way. Well, not, I mean, generally not, but it's not something, that's not something I would think is egregious that I would make somebody feel bad for. So I don't know, <laughs> but everybody check out his channel. There it is. Pop culture crisis. Also, I want to thank, um, just noticed some donations from Bella. Thank you so much, Bella for that. Thank you. Um, uh, Vita, uh, oh, my PayPal, of course, is freezing up right now. Let's try that again. But, uh, thank you for Bella. Thank you, Vita. Thank you. Oh, Bella says, love catching you live. Always greatly respect and enjoy your insights. Thank you. Um, Jody, thank you for your donation. No message. Um, and Stephanie says, I've been an avid watcher. Appreciate everything you do. Uh, well, we appreciate you too. All right. So everybody, um, one more time, my PayPal, you can just uh, look below in the description and I'm going to add it in the comments. Um, you can leave there's a, a couple, there. uh, there's a couple other super chats here. Did we get this oh, one yeah. from DC and C? Did we get that one? It says, oh. nice job on the eyelashes, Colonel. Yeah, I gave him the finger, actually. <laughs> ah. <laughs> but Rhaegar, we did not notice uh, Rhaegar Targaryen now who's antagonizing you with my heart is so full. It is not full. It is empty. It's not a real our thing. Our hearts, as, oh, I love this. Our hearts as a plethora are so full. <laughs> it's almost as bad as when I hear somebody say, I stepped into my confidence. That doesn't mean anything. You're oh, not saying anything. Stop doing that. Hilarious. All right, everybody, thank you so much. And Brett, uh, I will see you again next week. And yes. uh, I think I'm so proud of us that we got basically almost two full hours of Jada Pinkett Smith hate. So thank you, everyone. Major achievement. Your hearts are, I only allow your hearts, hearts to be are full, full if they're full of hate. No, I'm kidding. Oh it's a joke. Oh my God, I love it. I love it though. We can laugh about stuff. All right, everybody, love y'all. See you later. And.